everybody, and welcome to Row 60 at Georgia Football Podcast. My name is Clark Gaines. Joining me today, as always, Adam Thorne. Boom! Good Woo! morning, Adam. This is show number 69, and Let's it is go. hate week, baby. Hate week. It's time. All across the country, lots of big games Man. happening this week. Clark, I tell you what, can you believe it's already the last week of the regular season? No. This season, I think, has flown by more than any of them we've ever experienced, in my opinion. I mean, it just seems like it was yesterday we were going around getting the interviews for the Tennessee Martin yeah. game. <laughs> and I, I mean, and also just doing the season preview here, you know, in the shop and getting ready for uh, for the full football season. But, hey, we're there. It's, it's time to crank it on up. Five more notches, mm-hmm. man. Hate week. And what the new tradition now annually has been, we get a we get a bonus game now that we hey we get to sit inside Bobby Dodd Stadium and see where the following Saturday we'll be playing the Mercedes Benz Stadium, man. So exciting, uh, Clark. Can you believe we, we were talking about this before we began recording? This is the third straight year mm-hmm. that we are eleven and zero with just Georgia Tech in the way of a twelve and zero season, man. So it's perfection, three years in a yeah. row. And and I remember very vividly walking out of Bobby Dodd Stadium in two thousand twenty one, right mm-hmm. after we smoked Georgia Tech, and the feeling we had it was unbelievable. It was a huge deal, right? It was a huge but deal. But now it's like. It's just another. It's another season. Right. Of perfection, perfection, and it's man. Just crazy, and, man. And, and we're not taking it for granted. That's what yeah. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and I said, "Look, I've been following Georgia football a long time. Going to these games a long time. Me and you have Clark, and uh, you know we, we've seen some good times and we've seen some bad times during during that time. But it was always fun, always something mm-hmm. we love to do. But we're at the pinnacle. Of, we're in the glory years. It's not going to last forever. That's why we get so giddy when we're on the road watching Georgia play or in Sanford Stadium or doing this podcast, man. Because something we have loved since we were kids." is at the best it's ever been right now. Right. And we're never going to look back at it and say, hey, we should have just enjoyed that moment more. Mm-hmm. We're going to be like, man, we took advantage of that to the fullest whenever sure it did. does end. And I encourage everybody listening to this, if you're a Georgia football fan, which you are, if you're listening to this, I'm sure, to do the same, man. Mm-hmm. Enjoy the moment. I've said it the past few years. I'm going to keep saying it. Soak in it. Bathe in it, baby, because it don't get better than this year. Number one Georgia Bulldogs heading into – Bobby Dodd Stadium to play the Nerds, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, the inferior team in the state of Georgia to go 12 0. Once again, baby. Mm. Woo! Man, it's a dream. Good time it to be alive. It's a dream, baby. This is honestly one of my favorite weeks out of the entire year. It's not agree. my absolute favorite because I'll you get Thanksgiving. Is. You also get the 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 beat down you every do. year against Georgia Tech. Clark. We want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. I'm thankful for each and every one of you who uh, who listen to mm-hmm. us and the friends we have met through doing this podcast. Man, it's been a blessing. It's been a humbling experience and something that we've uh, we made lifelong friends doing, Clark. Absolutely, and uh, that's what I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving season, along yeah. with many other things that uh, we're, we're blessed to have in our lives. I, I'm with you, man. This is one of the, or if not the most exciting year. Uh, I love Thanksgiving Thursday, watching football, do some deer hunting, be with family, friends, eating good, man. I mean, what, what, what? What else could a just red blood American want? I don't know. Then that. Then and <laughs> that then sounds the, pretty great. And I love the Friday after Thanksgiving too, man. You just get to, you watch football, maybe build a fire or something, and get ready for for Georgia Georgia Tech that Saturday. But then also in the back of your minds, because we're fans, we might can't overlook a little bit what's happening in Atlanta the week right. after cranking up the Christmas season, man. Postseason football uh, that we've been blessed to experience with these past few years. It's great. It's great. Mm-hmm. And hey, think about how great it was, Clark. The past couple of years, we get to relive it again, and we get to enjoy every second of it again. So, let's go, baby. Absolutely. Well, Woo! I'm thankful for the beatdown we got to see this past Saturday in Neyland Stadium. It was That's a right. lot of fun. A great trip we had. So, we're going to talk about that trip on this episode. Recap right. that game. There's a lot to break down. A lot of yeah. really, really good things that we both saw this past Saturday. Uh, we've got some fun facts. We've got... A great, an excellent slate of games this upcoming week. Once again, it's hate week. This is when That's the right. rivalries kind of uh, fester. This is and- what makes college football good mm-hmm. and great and what it, it's been built upon and what's made it unique, these fan bases unique, is the the hatred of one alma mater to another alma mater, the in-state rivalries, yeah. man, the history, the tradition that you really don't get in any other sports, Clark. And I'll be honest with you, it's something that won't be around forever right. because the almighty dollar is going to change college sports so much man and college football that's why again another reason why just to enjoy every single second of mm-hmm. it michigan ohio state won't be the same as it always has been you know and you know how long will georgia georgia tech be on the schedule so enjoy these moments man think about the tradition and uh excited to be able to watch another chapter of yeah it. me too we've got some trivia on this episode georgia georgia tech preview at the very end so stick with us through Boom. it all it's gonna be a great show let's go let's do it before we get started i want to say this this friday night we're going to call it 8 o'clock right now. Just be on the lookout, though. It may change. 8 o'clock p.m., we're yes. going to do something brand new. 
That we are. We're going to do row 60 after dark. We did old beta run on it the other day. We did, we call it. did <laughs> we old sure beta did. run on it. I thought yeah. it went well. Yeah. I thought it went well. We did that right before uh, the Friday, the, the Friday before the Ole Miss game. Adam and I stayed online. We streamed and we brought in some guests, all of them being row 60 patrons. And uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a kind of a round table discussion about Georgia football, about the playoff picture. It was a lot of fun. So we're going to do it again this Friday night. This is not a live call-in show. Yes. Big difference. Uh, Not really big difference, but kind of, sort of. A little bit different. A little bit different. But anyway, it will be on Facebook Live and on YouTube. So we'll call it 8 o'clock right now. Join us. We'd love to see you there. That's right. Uh, it's going to be a we, lot of We fun. saved the live call-in shows now what we're looking for for kind of a, a bigger matchups, as you would say. As you see, we don't have the big game M&M. <laughs> I mean, yes, obviously, you take every advantage to beat the mess out of Georgia Tech, but we reserve big game M&M for bigger opponents, right? <laughs> yeah. And bigger bigger yeah. games. Uh, for opponents, we respect more, even though, you know, Brent Key's got him playing some ball down there on the flats, man. But the big game Eminem will be making its appearance again next week, hopefully for the rest of the year. Absolutely. I'm excited about that, Clark. Uh, yeah, excited. I love when we did this Row 60 After Dark the first time, which is, you know, just us all getting together and just really just some, just relaxing conversation. Just yeah. say, hey, just see where conversation takes us. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's something fun to catch up with everybody and do and, and something that uh, we'll We'll probably be doing hopefully from uh from now until Clark let's just say till hopefully Georgia tees it up in Houston, baby, in mm. early January. Oh, yeah. Knock on wood, hope that's gonna happen, baby. Yeah. Ought to be a lot of fun. So Good this stuff. Friday night, eight o'clock, see you there, Facebook Live or YouTube. All right. This past Saturday, Adam, let's go back in time yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Was awesome. It I was. love the trip up to Pigeon Forge. Every single time we go up there, we get a cabin. We share it amongst our families. Yeah. We, you know, cook breakfast there. We had a great breakfast. Oh, yeah. Uh, Saturday oh, yeah. morning. Your dad always p- just cooks a great breakfast on any mm-hmm. of our road trips that we're at, man. And uh, it's a fun time, Clark. I, I love going up to Pigeon Forge. I loved it with Callie. I mean, the age she was. Oh, we yeah. were able to ride some of the little kitty rides right there on the strip, man. Did the old Build-A-Bear thing. Nice. Uh, a good deal right there. So, good good family time first and then a, a fun game. It's my favorite road trip. been fortunate to do it uh, the majority of my life since I can remember and something that's probably coming to an end as a uh, as a biannual trip mm-hmm. because of the way the new SEC schedule is going to be going forward I know we got them in Athens next year but there's no guarantee Tennessee will be a permanent opponent from after 2024 on so really Clark wanted to take the time to really enjoy this trip and this trip to Knoxville and the Neyland and everything about it what I've loved about it throughout the years man and it didn't disappoint yeah it didn't sure didn't disappoint Adam, did you find a did you find a pancake house? I, I found yes, I found some pancake houses, <laughs> and yeah, we had a little game there, which is one of our favorite games when you go to East Tennessee and Pigeon Forge. Just see how many pancake houses yeah. you can you can you can count because uh, there, there's uh, multiple of them in the surrounding area, and. I got two. I was going to keep a tally of it. I got two, but then there were some we would pass by, and I was driving and, you know, trying to be a safe driver. Clark. Sure, especially I, when, when you have a daughter. Right, right. Place. And I would and, and Kelsey was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a picture at the pancake house. Yeah. Over there. And uh, I would uh, I would snap a picture kind of on the run, not looking at it. Then it turned all blurry, so I couldn't add it to the tally. <laughs> right. But there was multiple more than, uh, than we had. I mean, all sorts of them. Flapjacks, pancakes, smoky, smoky bears. Um, pancakes and flapjacks, and I mean, yeah. I, I mean, just a grand time. Oh, yeah. I love, I love it. Salt of the Earth people in Pigeon Forge, and uh, I'll be honest, it's one of my favorite vacation places to go. I love hey, it. I, I love it. I nothing love wrong it. with that. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't ever get old to me. Yeah. What didn't get old either, Adam, was going up to Neyland and and winning this football game. I tell you, the atmosphere was pretty good. I got to give it to Tennessee fans. Yeah, they were loud for about ten seconds in the game. Yeah, the first play, man, the what seventy-five yard scamper that they had. That place was electric. And, yeah, and uh, you know, sitting sitting where we were, it was uh, it, you, you could hear it, man. But what's so weird about it, man? We all just looked at each other, and not, and other Georgia fans that were around us, man, were just kind of like, oh, whatever. You know, yeah. there was no really no worry in anybody, mm-hmm. just nobody like overreacting, like, what are we doing? You know, why is it? You and none of well, that, just kind of everybody just looking around, okay. man. It's loud right now, so yeah. it's it's, it's, uh, it's, it's they, good stuff. They, yeah, I mean, like I said, I got to hand it to them; they played well, and uh, oh, sorry, they didn't play well. The fans played well. That's what I was trying to say. What, what you got there, Adam? <laughs> I was reaching in the pockets of my, my Georgia pullover, and I have not worn this thing since the Peach Bowl. Oh, God. This is a hamburger wrapper from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. From the Peach Bowl? From December 31st, God, 2022. It, it smell? From the Peach Bowl. It smell no, like a burger? There's no smell to it, man. That's, hmm. But that's, I remember I had a hamburger, and that's exactly what that is. The official <laughs> Show the Mercedes-Benz 
Is that going to be a problem? Hamburger with Setting Rapper? Up? Wow. From that night. It's that kind of night. Gross. Man. I got to be honest. There's nothing gross about it. It's just a piece of paper, man. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, anyway. Mercedes Benz Stadium, sure enough. Yeah. From that night. Very interesting. From that night. <laughs> well, Noah Ruggles shanked it, baby. Yeah. When it hooked left at midnight, the ball dropped in New York, mm-hmm. but it hooked left. In Georgia. In Atlanta. At midnight. Yeah, I like that's that. That's right. Anyway, sorry. Oh, sorry. Man, get, no, back, get back to the regular, regular scheduled programming. Anyway, yeah, fans of Tennessee. Boom. Pretty elite, like I said, for 10, for 10 seconds of the game. It got loud. It's probably the loudest I've ever heard that stadium at, at one given time. Yeah, Would you yeah, say so? Yeah, 2015 got rowdy when they yeah. were winning it there at the end. And I, you know, seen it back in the former days in 07, 05 pregame, man, mm-hmm. and 03. It was loud, but yeah, for the past few years, I hadn't heard it that loud before, and and uh, yeah, I mean, it was an electric environment pregame, man. There's a video of the, the guys lined up at the tunnel, and Kirby's, you know, just got his hands in his pocket, wearing yeah. something similar like what I got on right now for those looking on YouTube, and just kind of just taking in the crowd, man. Right. They went, and and uh, this team's unfazed, man. A lot of people say, "How's Georgia going to handle?" Really, their only second true road game, you know, they mm-hmm. they about got beat in um in Auburn at Jordan Hare. You can't count Vanderbilt, and then Florida's in neutral side. Right, you know, and and uh, but oh, shoot, it, it didn't phase them. Yeah. I, I don't think there is a moment or an environment that is too big for this Georgia football team, man, and for the culture that's been built in Athens. Yeah. And 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 that, that's that's crazy to say, but it, it's the truth. It's yeah. the truth. Something we used to couldn't say, but now, yeah, a hundred percent. I've got a fun fact about the noise and stuff, uh, how that affected the game in just a minute. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I do want to uh, shout out Will Snipes. He's a he's a uh, row sixty patron. We got to tailgate with him, had a lot yeah. of good conversation with him and his uh, friend who's a Tennessee fan. Don't yeah. remember his name, but hey, it was a great time. Uh, and then Vivian and James. And Mrs. Snipes there. Yes, and Miss Snipes. Yes, that's right. And that's then right. Vivian so, James. You got you ran into her. Yeah, yeah, I ran into Miss Vivian. Uh, she was uh, with Miss Deborah Grizzle. Um, and uh, it, it was great getting to see her. I was uh, it, it was crazy. I was walking into the uh, there was like a Knoxville Visitor Center, uh-huh. kind of like the parking lot where we park, and I was gonna go in there, and she was just sitting there. Ah. And uh, yeah, we struck up she a conversation. She, yeah. It was good. Okay. It was good stuff, man. And uh, then ran into Miss Deborah later. Mm-hmm. Um, DGDs right there. Oh yeah, good, good road dogs right there. Absolutely. I hope they had a great time. Um, of course that was pregame. I'm sure they did for what happened. <laughs> uh, it sounded like they were having a good time yeah. first. So great seeing them. So shout out to Miss Vivian and Miss Deborah. Yeah, and then the last guy I want to shout out is Hill Hartman. We got to meet him. We were actually walking into the uh stadium and yeah. about to scan our tickets and we said or some we heard somebody say hey is, are y'all row 60 i was like well yeah we are a matter of fact we are yeah. yes. <laughs> and we had a great conversation with hill got to meet him and uh hey thank you man for for listening thank you all for listening yeah, thank I you mean, all whether we've listening. met you or not it truly does mean a lot and you're a friend for your sport if we haven't even met yeah. you you're yeah. a friend of ours even yeah. if we've met or not as long as you're a dog that's right that's I, right I, that's I, right as long as you're a dog yeah but uh, Florida Gator, but, I don't know. It's just been so much fun, man. I mean, really, I'm, I'm getting a little sentimental in this show. Right now. Are you? I mean, just Are take it in the feeling? moment. Just take it in the moment, Clark. Just take it in the moment, man. Of just look where the past two years have been, mm-hmm. and and really going into this year, we were like, and I know it's not like we we clinched the playoff berth yet, but even if Georgia doesn't, how special has it been now on the cusp of another 12 and 0 season, man, mm-hmm. and another shot at it. And uh, just just the fun and the excitement, the buildup that you have with your family and friends and the excitement and what it, you know, just something extra that adds to life. And, you know, I mean, it's not where you find your whole joy in life by any means, no. by any stretch. Some people uh, do, but that's sad. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but, but it's something that we get excited about. And, yeah. I, and I think what makes it what it is to us when we do this podcast is the memories we make with uh, the friends that we made doing this podcast and with each other, our families and mm-hmm. and loved ones, and uh, and just seeing them do it again is just it's just great, man. And I can't can't say enough how we're going to enjoy every second of it, baby. Absolutely, man. It was also good seeing all of our Franklin County dogs, mm-hmm. the Burton family. They were there. Uh, oh yeah, Ryland Tamplin. Uh, Man, there, there's a lot of folks up there from Franklin County. We got a big group picture. We'll have to post it. Right oh, yeah. Here. Always good seeing Big Al up there, man. Big yeah. Al is a, is, a, is a dog that's been there, you know, one of the one of the elite dogs. You yes. Know? I've always a said true kinda, DGD. It, yeah, it's not my mentor in dog fandom, you know, from <laughs> from an early age. Yeah. So, true DGD. So, yeah. seeing all them there celebrating another win with them, is it, 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 it was spectacular. Yeah. The last thing I saw a lot of in Neyland Stadium, Adam, and this was awesome, 
Peach State Pride stuff. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I did see a I'm lot. I'm not too, kidding, man. I saw it everywhere, and that's right. uh, I'm actually wearing oh, yeah, a that's Peach a State nice Pride pullover. pullover. I got one like that too. It's very comfortable and nice. We yeah, need to match one. one time, man. That's a good one, man. So yeah, we talk about this stuff, man. They got stuff, good stuff over there. Go check mm-hmm. them out. We got another hat here on our uh, Bulldog Cookie Jar model display. I love this kind of the trucker look, like I like, I like right here. Yeah. Got a nice Georgia patch on it, man. So uh, pumping out some good stuff over there. They really Clark. are pumping yeah. out some good stuff. Like I said, any style. That you you, you kind of you have right. Mm-hmm. Peach State Pride's got it, man. You can yeah. look good and classy doing it while represent the state of Georgia and the dogs too. Absolutely. So go check our friends out there, man. Get yep. close to uh, Christmas time, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patreon shout outs. Here we go. We got two new patrons Boom. this week, uh, and one of them is Bill Snipes. Yes, he is the father of Will Snipes. Love that. Who's also a patron. So yes, hey, awesome. the whole family's Thank getting you. in on it. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Yep. That is great. That and is then awesome. Robin Carson, who I believe is from Franklin County, right here. Also another Franklin County dog. So thank y'all so much for the support. Um, yep. If you're not uh, on Patreon yet and want to ex- unlock exclusive Rose 60 content, just go to patreon.com slash Rose 60, or you can oh. download the app and search Rose 60. We have, a, us there. we have a fun, fun chat going on. We do. The Rose 60. You know, I don't have a Facebook, so I get on my wife's Facebook, <laughs> and every time I'm, I put, put a message on there, I put Dash Adam. Dash Adam. Yeah. Last night, Clark, did you see I posted something last night? You did. I was about, in the, bed yeah. about the 2009 Georgia-Georgia Tech game, right. my favorite. So, uh, just uh, that's the type of discussion we have. It's great, man. Yeah. Um, th- it makes, you know, getting through the work week better yeah. and, and, and stuff, and just being able to, to talk, you know, from game to game and, and catch up with everybody. It's yeah. a good online platform. Absolutely, yeah. We've got an exclusive Facebook group just for the Rose 60 patrons, and it's a lot of fun. We'll post tons of game day content and everything. So if you want to join, and just $5 yep, a month. And chatter in between uh, in between games during the week, man. You know, that's where social media is, is at its best, Clark. I'm not a social media guy in a sense. I think there's a lot of bad with social media, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm one that I think, though, the fellowship that you can have from your online community, that's that's when, you know, why, when it's at its best. Yes, agreed. Of course. Agreed. Not, not other things that you see on social media, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, I, I talk – to the Kel- I mean Kelsey, I'm going on on a tangent here, but you know it's just I like, I don't understand the TikTok. You don't want to understand. I don't well, understand Adam, the, the TikTok. TikTok's going good for us. So oh, hey, okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to plug, I'm gonna plug we're good. her on TikTok. Well, good. We're good. At Rose sixty we're good. follows. Well, good. Man. But well, doesn't if you're mean you have to have TikTok, a TikTok. Then golly, get on the TikTok, man. Find us at Rose sixty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, <laughs> moving on. Weekly concession stands report. Mm. Adam, I have zero report. Oh, personal report. I, I don't have anything to say. Uh, I yeah, yeah. I um, I uh, bought a water, two waters, and, and a pizza before the game. Okay. Kelsey wanted a pizza. She needed to eat and everything. We didn't because we didn't eat any lunch beforehand. So, um, <clears throat> I uh, it was a cheese pizza cart, Papa John's brand pizza. Yeah, you know? didn't look good. Mm. Not a really good um. Pie. Sauce to cheese ratio. Oh, okay. You know, like you know when you open up a box of uh, pizza, and I guess it's. Each and everybody has their different opinion on what they like about cheese pizza or pepperoni pizza, whatever. But this was like just marinara sauce on it, right? Mm. You know, no cheese. Really? Like just a little dab. No, like that. that's awful. Yeah. You know? Didn't, wasn't like the pieces weren't evenly, uniformly cut. You know? Ooh, yeah, that's bad. Uh, I think the, the crust was a little bit too burnt. Uh-oh. Should I say? Wow, and I and I know probably these concession stand workers, their daytime job is not making pizza, right? <laughs> I would hope like not. At, uh, at, know, at the stadium, at the, yeah, stadium. At the stadium. So you you see that they're um they're uh they're they're kind of I mean I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but probably the worst looking. I didn't I didn't try any pizza, try any of it. So I guess I you know you don't judge a book by its cover. So sure. I didn't eat any, but just from the uh, the eye test cart, mm-hmm. the eye test, the pizza was didn't didn't look good. Did it have any conference championships? No. No. Do you get what it what you said the eye test? Oh, the eye test. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the eye test. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I was I was trying to make a that was good. Joke. That was good. Sorry. No, no, it doesn't have yeah, it doesn't have any big wins. No, it doesn't pass the eye test. Okay. It doesn't just like the Tennessee football team. Oh, so it did not nice. pass the eye test. But hey, I will say this, we'll give them to this, man. They uh they do have uh Texas Roadhouse style peanuts. So they have that over Auburn. But the atrocity that we saw with the peanut packaging in Auburn uh it was awful. And uh <laughs> but Anyway, oh, I got something to add okay. this real quick. Real right. quick. Yeah. You know, we were talking the other week about how we need to put um, Georgia peanuts in um, yes. the farmers. Yes. Yeah, so, apparently, I don't know where they're at in Sanford Stadium because I've just been getting the Texas Roadhouse-style ones and all the concession stands I go to. The, the thing I had to go to last week 
um, the president of the Georgia Peanut Commission was speaking there. Ah. And he said that they have gotten Georgia Peanuts in Sanford Stadium and at Foley Field and really? stuff now. And so huh. I was like, ah, you know, I, I just those. talked about that. But I hadn't seen them. They're, yeah. they're in the red package. You'll see them. But I hadn't seen them in any of the concession stands huh. yet. But anyway. Interesting. Just, Interesting. I was like, dang, I just talked about I didn't say this. But I was like, dang, we just brought this up on the podcast about how we need to <laughs> do this. Maybe. Maybe they just made that decision yeah, after so. listening to Rose. I mean, 60. why not? You know, I mean, oh, uh, but uh, but yeah. One more thing about the Tennessee concession stands. I didn't get one this year, but when we were really big on highlighting hot dogs and individual concession stands, they offer three varieties of a hot dog. Mm. In Neyland Stadium, that still holds true to this day, according to the menu. Yeah. So uh, I have not seen that in the SEC. So I mean, you gotta, you know, you really gotta tip your hat and kind of add a put a gold star on for that. Yeah. You know, being able to offer a, a variety of dogs out there. Yeah. You know, One thing so. I will say, it was unbelievably packed in the corridors, oh, in awful. the walkways. It was. I just kept shouting, "Who engineered this place? <laughs> Who engineered this place?" It's awful. If you've ever been to Neyland, you know exactly what I I'm mean, talking about. I mean, we lost the part. Like, we, we, we got lost. Because it's like yeah. uh, the best description when you're in um you're in one of those uh, kind of lines and those corridors where people are going each and every way, man. It's like, you know, not making a lot of this by any means, but kind of like you get stuck in a tidal wave. Like uh, you really? get to go on, well, you know how it is, yeah, man. Yeah. Like you have somebody, if you stop, then you know, and then but you're in the crowd, you just gotta keep moving or you're gonna get trampled. You could lose your party <laughs> yeah. in a hurry, you know? Yeah. Lose the people you're with. So that's kinda like what it is, man. Well, you get swept up in a tidal wave going through them them things and it just takes you and then you try to just break off, you know, and go sideways to when you uh when you get to your section. Yeah. All that to say, I couldn't I was not about to fight the lines. No, no. And no, no, and no, no, no. I did no. say when I when I said uh who engineered this place? This is the worst stadium I've ever been to. I made that comment out loud. Yeah, I had to some get a lady, response, right? Yeah, and uh, yes, that and right. I, and I had so some you lady. Got what you were fishing for, right? I had some lady say, "Well, just go on back to Georgia," and I said, "Oh, trust me, I will, and I can't wait after we whip y'all's tail." And then I walked to my seat. I probably shouldn't have done that, but my wife Caitlin was not there to calm me down. The and, moment you know, just got the best. Yeah, of yeah. That was funny when we were leaving Clark. You forgot your wallet before we left. And Caitlin had to come oh, yeah. give you your wallet yeah. at the car. And I was like, oh, Caitlin, what are we going to do having to control Clark without you? <laughs> and the look of relief on her face saying, that's y'all's problem. Yeah. And, I, and I was like, oh, boy. Oh, here boy. we go. Yeah. Here we go. So, uh, oh, that was good one stuff. One last story I have. And, we, and people are probably wondering, well, did they have any run-ins this time? Because I've yeah, told people, we've true. told that's people, true. don't go to Tennessee. You're going to have a run-in. There's a confrontation. I'll, I'll have to say this. There were none this yeah. time. There really weren't. And that's maybe because we beat the dog mess out I, of them, and they kind of got humbled the week before against Missouri. I think that was a big part of it. Yeah, man. it was funny. I I talk about there's an ag podcast guy, you know, does some cows. Big Tennessee fan from Tennessee that I enjoyed, man. I listened to him, and he was going to be at the uh, the game. And I was like, man, I want to you know meet up with this guy. So uh, I emailed him last week, saying, hey, you know, where we want to meet? Been talking back. He said, man, I'm not going. I'm not after, yeah. after we laid an egg in Columbia. I'm not going to say I understand <laughs> what it is. So I, um, I think the fan base, Clark, the conclusion I drew of why we didn't have any run, they were broken. They were. They were broken yep. and humble. Like, and it, it was a uh, humble know, Tennessee fans. I'm just kidding. I'm we you, can't really they, talk. Yeah, no, but uh, they were. Yeah, they were. And I'm sorry. I know we might be obnoxious right now. And, and people act like Clark that, oh, just wait now until Georgia loses. Like, we've never seen Georgia lose before. Yeah. Like we we've been there, we've been booed, yes. we've been we've had cars or uh, keys jingled at us. 2015, walking out of Tennessee, I remember it vividly. I was sitting in the upper level, man. Reggie Davis, God bless him, dropped that ball, went right through his arms, mm -hmm. right there. Rough season, rough season. Probably the prettiest pass Grayson Lambert's ever threw in his career. Mm -hmm. Went right through the old bread basket, man, and and you know it's just that time to make the exit. So we were walking down, and 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 that's another reason why I take that radio headset, especially when you get the games in the way stadiums back then on AM radio. And uh, I just I just find a contemporary Christian station, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and put it on or a country station or something just to kind of get my mind off of not hear the banner back. But I mean, right. I love it. That's what you're asking for when you go into that is true. the stadium. Yeah, but they were jingling car keys in my face. Yeah, I, mean, and I remember happens. that Saturday night, and it happened. That's fine. And, and but for people to think that us Georgia fans just all of a sudden magically became Georgia fans at the start of the Georgia Clemson game, at yeah. the Duke's Mayo Bowl, right? And we've only seen one loss in our Georgia fandom. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, oh, we're going to get it coming to us one day. Like, no. Yeah. We've You're been there. Me. We've lived through the misery. I walked out of Vanderbilt Stadium in 2013 after seeing Georgia lose to Vanderbilt. <laughs> did Did anybody wave goodbye to you? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Vandy all, fans? all seven of them <laughs> that were in attendance that day. Oh, and I remember gosh. I propped up on the, uh, on, on the side of uh, – 
sat the truck there and just like, we just lost the band. Yep. You know, but I mean, you can't say anything to it. But, yeah. but what I'm saying is, it's so funny how people think that, you know, and I, I'm not one now to advocate going up and just barking at some and, random and people's cussing face. Somebody cussing somebody. No, yeah. that's not classic. But if you, uh, you know, if you want to just have a little friendly banner, like just get loud, excited about the dogs, not directed individually at another fan's but it's you know if you're sitting beside another fan and they make a big play you ought to bark get excited but not directed at yeah, them in yeah. their face i think that's when that crosses the line but uh heck man I, I don't know i feel like as a society uh if we're getting to the point where there can't be friendly banner between southern football teams man that this was built upon the pride of it then what are we doing as a society, Clark? I don't know. If we can't, like, if, if you have to just be, you know, not get excited, not not show any emotion because you might offend the other team's fans or something and might come back to you one day, what are we doing? Why, why yeah. do we even go to the game and care? Right. Like, I, I'm with you there, Adam. Getting too I'm soft, man. I mean, you, yeah. what, I, I've heard, I wasn't there, but I've heard some stories of what it was like in the Gator Bowl in the early 80s, man. The old Gator Bowl with mm-hmm. Georgia, Florida fans and what it was like and what the what tradition was built on from generations in the past when it really meant something to them and there was yeah. really more pride in the school you went to. Or heck, you didn't even have to go to the school. The, 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 your state school, your mm-hmm. state's flagship school or whatever, and – it meant more back then, and now as a society, I just think we're getting a little bit too, you know, too away soft, from it. Like, too saw, too sensitive. Yep. I, I might be going on a little bit too, too out in left field. I'll, I'll stop it here. But <laughs> if it's getting to the point where people are upset that you know, that just we, give a friendly we, gesture of just, just, I was wait. about to say, let's just call it how it is. People are getting mad at us for we posted something online on Instagram of us waving goodbye to Tennessee fans once again. We've been waved out of plenty of stadiums. Like I once said, again, and here's the thing: once I've we had do lose, keys jingled in my face yeah, in 2015, yeah, yeah. walking out of this. This is what it is, you know, in that but, same stadium. But once we lose, we are going to lose at some point. We're going to take it. You know, we'll be able to take it. We're big boys. It's they okay. want to wave me out of the stadium. It's not like, oh, what are they doing? I'm yeah. not going to get mad. And I'm be not like, going to get that butt hurt. Dang, I should have listened to the random guy on Instagram that says, "Just wait until <laughs> it comes back yeah. around." Oh, man. All right, Grant. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. So, anyway, what I'm saying, enjoy the moment. Keep it friendly. Keep it where you want. You know, there's a line, and everybody knows where the line is. Mm -hmm. But I hope other teams do, you know, do the same to me. And that's what you ask for when you go into environments. And there was people who bark. That's one thing, too, I'm seeing more and more of nowadays. And I don't remember it kind of growing up back in the, I don't know, David Green, Stafford years, that era. I don't remember going on the road and having. Fans of opposing teams bark I know, at me, mockingly. But now you go to Auburn, you go to Tennessee. I'm sure we'll have it. Lord, who knows what we'll have at Tech? I, 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 that's always a wild card. Equations. It's very interesting what happens at Tech. I, I mean, I, there's definitely been a lot of ugly things said at that Tech that just left me like, oh my gosh, did I just hear that right? Mm-hmm. Just I have to do a double take, but. And then we'll have it in Atlanta, SEC champ. But people like to bark now. It's like a new thing to go, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm, I'm like, well, okay. Is that supposed to, you know? But, no, hey, I love it, man. Whatever. That's part of it. I love it. I love it. That's what makes college football great. And if other fan bases didn't, you know, engage in some, a little bit of friendly banner with the other ones, you know, or it might not even be friendly, but then it wouldn't be what makes it special, in my opinion. But there's yep. a line. Don't cross it. And right. We don't cross it. Boom. Anyway, sorry. Love it. Just went on that tangent. No, that's they, good, they right? They said, Clark, it was yeah. good. It was good. Good stuff. All right, Clark's fun facts. Here we go. Got Boom. a lot. I got a lot today. All right. Okay. Give it so to sit us. back, relax, and we'll just enjoy Grab these. a coffee. Grab sit a coffee. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Take, take your shoes off and stay a while for this. Yeah. Because they're a lot. And yeah. these are really Let's good Let's down fact. a little bit. Just have a good time. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy us, man. Kirby Smart is now 20-0 and in SEC East road games. Yeah. 20-0. and yeah. And that excludes obviously Florida and Florida Jacksonville. And Jacksonville. Yeah, that's so, still a great statistic. Yeah, twenty. That's dominant. domination, man. Yep. Uh, Georgia improves its streak to twenty-eight straight games. Wow. One more win against Tech, it will break Alabama's all-time yes. winning streak in the yes, SEC. Yes, 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 man. So, so that's what's at stake: is the most games ever won consecutively in the Southeastern Conference. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sweet. And to do it in this area too, let, let's yeah. call it like it is. Okay. Nobody will ever touch Oklahoma's streak. Hey, 49 don't, don't, streak. Don't say never. 49 I mean, streak. I mean, hey, yeah, it's going to be very tough. It could It's going to be very tough. It <laughs> yeah. could happen. But wasn't that streak like in the early 50s? Mm-hmm. It wasn't even the Barry Switzer era. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't I know. I think it was in the in the fi- early, maybe. Is that right? I have no idea. Something. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is just very impressive. Modern day, having playoff games, man. And uh, something to really, really, really – 
just a nice notch in the belt to oh, yeah. get this game against Tech. Uh, to to you know be able to have that bragging right. Oh yeah, love that. That's awesome. Been a fun ride. So during that twenty eight game win streak, Georgia's average margin of victory. Listen to this. Yeah, twenty five point six points, and twenty four of twenty eight of those victories have been by double digits. Now that man. that is a statement right there. Yeah, yeah. Golly, you know that's one thing, man. Uh, 2021 teams were just getting blown out. Stetson Bennett was coming out, not really playing the whole second half. A lot of the starters right. weren't, you know, kind of going into the postseason that year. Everybody was like, man, Georgia hadn't been tested. Have they hadn't had any adversity? Stars hadn't played a full game. Man, it's a different time this year. Yeah. It's a different thing this year. You can't say that about this team this year. This team's been through the fire and proven themselves, man. But uh, that that's an unreal, yeah, unreal stat is. right there. Uh, the Dogs became the first team to go 8-0 and in the SEC three years in a row this past weekend after beating uh, Tennessee. So 8-0 and in the SEC three years in a row. That's the first team, first program, I should say, first school who's ever done that. So even, crazy. even Kirby Smart's Alabama teams in 11, 12, yep. and 13. You, yep. you like what I did there? Yes, I do. <laughs> Same as, you know, 11, 12, yeah, they lost to LSU mm-hmm. in the regular season in 11. And right. Then, yeah, and then Auburn and kick six and thirteen, exactly. man. So I mean that that right there, that, that, man, crazy, ah. unbelievable, man. Uh, this one comes from a row sixty patron, DGD. We got to sat uh, sit, sat beside him. We sat got we him. we did sat no we 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 sat beside Baylor. Sorry, we did Baylor Terrell. Uh, Kirby is now sixty two and two when having a ten point lead going into halftime. Only losses were. 16 Tennessee and 17 Natty, 62 and 2. <laughs> That's unreal. When Georgia has a, a double digit lead, lead going into yep. the going into the half. Going, going into, into the B. That's going into that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, crazy. Uh two more. Here we go. All right. No Tennessee receiver, Adam, got over 45 receiving yards this past Saturday. Georgia had three guys. Yep. Marcus Rosemey, Jack Say, Dylan Bell, and Brock. Uh, Unbelievable, crazy. man. We think of Josh Hopple's offense, especially what the reincarnation of it was last year. Mm-hmm. That's that's hard to believe. I know yeah. they've been kind of banged up there, but hey, you got to have depth, man. Yeah. I mean, it shows, so, especially when you play them in the 11th game of the year. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And then the last one, Tennessee had more false starts than Georgia did mm-hmm. in their home stadium. How does mm-hmm. that work? Probably the, the pocket of Georgia fans that we had right there. Yeah, probably did. I'd like I'd to say think that's, so. that's what happened. We made just loud. enough noise, just enough to really get old Cooper Mays kind of rattled a little bit. Yeah, but uh, but no, that's fun. Hey, I got a bonus Adam fun fact. Okay, let's see. That uh, you know, I was laying in bed the other night, couldn't go to sleep, and I was like, man, let me <laughs> add up the totals from Kirby's first game as head coach at the University of Georgia in Neyland Stadium and. 17, 19, 21, and 23, and see what the, you know, if you added them all up, what the score would be. Right. And the score would be Kirby has played Tennessee in Knoxville as Georgia's head coach four times, Clark, with the score being 2017, 41 to nothing, 2019, 43, 14, 2021, 41, 17, 2023, 38, 10. Mm. A combined overall record of those four games, Georgia has outscored Tennessee 163 to 41. So if you took all of Tennessee's combined points, three different head coaches during that time span, and added them up, they would have only beat Georgia one time and one game, or and they would have lost in one game, and we would have been going into overtime in the other two. Oh, my God. Yeah, and hey, a fun fact by Will Snipes—he posted on the Patreon page the other day. Uh, I saw, and man, I—I I, I know I don't—I don't think Kirby's ever lost as a. He definitely did as a player, but as a coach in, in Neyland? Neyland Stadium, hmm. definitely never lost at Alabama, and uh, I wow. don't think he ever lost when he was at LSU or didn't play him when he was at Florida State, and then. Yeah, I don't think he ever lost to him. I don't know if they ever even played at Neyland when he was a you know a uh, position coach with Saban. Over there. So, wow. I mean, unreal. That's, that's unreal. Crazy. I, I, would, I would be safe to say that is a 100% correct fact, man. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously. And it's 100% Kirby Smart Stadium. They just need to remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like uh, Mark Rick owns Bobby Dodd that we're going to go play in Saturday. Kirby Smart owns Neyland. Yeah. Which Kirby owns. Yeah, Kirby Bobby owns Dodd a lot too. of stadiums if we're going. Yeah, if we're just going to say that. You know. All right. Well, let's talk about Georgia, Tennessee, and just recap this game uh, pretty quickly here. Let's start with Carson. Let's start with the Georgia offense. Adam, I think you made this comment mid-game. Carson just doesn't look like a first-year starter. He just doesn't. He doesn't, man. And, you know, everybody's like, hey, just wait until he has that game. He has Mm -hmm. that game because every first-year starting quarterback has where just not seeing the field well, a couple turnovers, forced passes, just not clicking. You know, everybody's got that. Jalen Milrow had his at the beginning of the year, yada, yada, yada. Carson hadn't had that game yet. Right. And, um, man, it's just looking like he is so dialed in. 
and seeing the field and reading defenses so well and confidence level. And it's obviously the good Lord gave him an arm that you combine that with combine it with how well he is reading defenses and his decision making and being able to get rid of the ball quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because I mean Carson Beck's not gonna be a guy who is going to be able to just be mobile in the pocket and extend plays and do that. He's being able to read it fast, hit his playmakers, get the ball out quick. But also, Clark, when the pocket is collapsing on him, he's able to step up. And we've seen the past few weeks scamper and get about seven or eight and extend yeah. drives yeah. on some third down plays or whatnot, man. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think he's making money more and more every week, Clark. And uh, I honestly think we're getting to the point where even with as loaded as this quarterback class is, when you look at what you want in a pro-style quarterback, Clark, these he's NFL GMs are wanting – and if we're wanting to see Georgia do what we're hoping they do, the end result, man, I think when you add that happening and then Carson Beck's performance on the field, if that happens, man, I think he's working his way up into a a, a first-round draft pick that yeah. uh, it's going to be hard to pass up and come back another year, man. And as Georgia fans, that's what we need to hope. I mean, yeah, obviously we'd love to see him back next year. But, man, I mean, it's unreal to think he's just passing all these guys that all the offseason mm -hmm. chatter was about, man. Yeah. And, I mean, he looks – I mean – I don't see how, and obviously not in that field or have the knowledge they do, but just to the average fan, I don't see how. And taking off red and black glasses while looking at how you can't look at Carson Bay and be like, man, that's a, that's an NFL quarterback right there. Yeah, he sure is. Arm strength, man, just rockets it. But I, I just think of how well he reads defenses. And I think that comes with a lot of his patience and what he did when when he was the second guy, you know, coming into the game the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And he took every advantage of the opportunity, man, and something – I'm thankful for, thankful to have him, man. Because I'll be honest, I've said it before, when he threw that pick six against UAB, the only score UAB had the second game of 2021 season, just his body language and everything, and him not getting start over Stetson that day when JT was hurt, you kind of thought, man, he's probably going to leave after this. Yeah. But nah, he stayed, looked great last year, and then this year's just took it to a whole nother level. DGD, Carson Beck, man, go oh, yeah. get that, that SEC championship, national championship, baby. Absolutely. He went 24 Unreal. for 30. 298 yards, another game, 250-plus yeah. passing yeah. yards, 9.9 .9 average per pass. That's crazy. And three touchdowns. I mean, he played phenomenally. And like you said, he extended drives. I think his pocket presence, his awareness is really, really good. Um, Tennessee brought some pressure at times, but he was able to kind of manipulate uh, in the pocket and, and yeah. get where he needed to be to make a good pass. Um, and like you said, too, he extended some drives. We did. We played great on third down. I mean, we got in a lot of third well, we're down situations. We're the best situations. in the country with it, man. Yeah, we sure are. We're we the have best to be. in the country. Yeah, we went nine. It is. We went nine for thirteen on third downs. Just crazy, man. I mean, if you're if mm -hmm. for, if you're getting in thirteen third down positions, that's not necessarily good. And Kirby said that post game. He was like, you know, not we really don't want to be shooting ourselves first down and and getting ourselves kind of behind the sticks and everything. But if you're going to get in third downs, at least you can convert, and especially on the road. Um, moving forward, you know, we're not going to have another true, quote-unquote, game on the road. Right. So, you know, and I'm not saying the crowd can't play a factor in some of these other games, but it's definitely not going to be like it was in Tennessee. So you got to remove that factor moving forward, which is good. Yeah. Uh, and um, that helps with communication. That certainly helps with getting your calls and, and making some adjustments at the line if you're Carson. So – um, man, played great on third down. Uh, also, Marcus throws me Jack saying that. What do oh, you think man. about him? I, I love him, Clark. Um, I think guys like him and Dylan Bell are just are just special. Yeah, you know. And um, I, I think well, having having those guys are just selfless, man. And um, just guys. And what I've noticed, Clark, about this this team is, you know, because people might think, man, how could you get so much elite skill players in when? You know, there's only one football to pass around, right. right? But what Georgia does, man, there's not like just just one just you know just bell cow they're gonna ride car in the mm, sense of there's one. Well, there is one, but <laughs> but but hear me out, hear me yeah, out. Yeah. I agree. I, when no, the I, know what you're I know what you're But yeah, Brock Bowers, obviously, you don't have him. You might not escape Auburn, Alabama, right? Yeah. And then Lad McConkey, when he comes back, that was his game in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. I'd say Dejon Edwards. His career day, man, when we really needed him when other guys weren't there, when Brock gets hurt, it's Vanderbilt, man, right. toting the load. Right. And then, you know, I feel like uh, Dylan Bell's game was Saturday. Yeah. When you have Ladd that's out, he kind of plugs in there and he throws for a touchdown and runs a touchdown or catches a touchdown, man. And uh, well, and then Kendall Milton, big game against Ole Miss. So what I'm saying is, my, and Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint will come in, and he had a big game against Kentucky, he had a big, you know, big game. Saturday is, I think what's so great is these guys – all know their role and all are bought into the culture and you just never know which games you might have to uh 
you might have to, you know, these guys, their their numbers called, man. They're going to have to be the guys right. that stepped up. I mean, especially with Brock Bowers coming off a of, coming off an injury, man, it opens up opportunities for other guys too. Lad McConkey banged up, so I just think when these guys' numbers are called, then hey, they're doing it, man. So uh, very very exciting to see that. Uh, so many just different weapons to distribute the football to, mm-hmm. and the experience is just yeah. there. But yeah, yeah, there's definitely one bell cow you ride, but, <laughs> but, but you know, I mean, well, it's a defensive coordinator's worst nightmare. Oh, it is. I mean, because if you if you try to double team one guy, it's going to leave another guy who's equally talented yeah. uh, wide open, and yeah. and that's just, hey, man. You, and if you try to play man, well, you're going to get beat somewhere, right? right? I mean, whether it's 19, whether it's one, whether it's six, whether it's 84, somebody's going to beat you. And that's just the risk you take playing this Georgia offense. Yeah. I mean, it, this is a heck of an offense. When you think of Rah Rah Thomas, man, Dylan Bell, I mean, Lad McConkey, Marcus Rosemary, Jack Saint, and then, uh, but Jack Saint and Bell, I feel like Clark are so selfless. We've talked about how good of a perimeter blocker at, that Rosemary Jack Saint is, a behind the scenes guy with some of these plays, man, that he doesn't get the credit for. You're not really eyeing on him, but the block, if you go back and look, the blocks he makes from a wide receiver standpoint are yeah. unbelievable, man. And Dylan Bell, you know, coming into running back when Depp was a little short there, taking away some reps he had as a receiver that he's been working at, but then coming in and, and doing what he did mm-hmm. Saturday, you know, pays full circle. I think that's the, the, the championship just culture of this team of guys who are, you just don't hear any just, you know, what that you hear in other SEC programs or programs around the nation of any disgruntled bit about not getting enough carries, not getting right. enough touches, you know, targets, whatever, man. And people know their role and they know that they're going to be on the biggest stage of any team in college football. And you never know when you might have to be the guy that your number's called, that you're the one who spot- highlighted that game, you mm-hmm. man. So. I mean, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable what this offense has done now that we're at the tail end of the regular season. The whole of the offseason chatter was, how's Mike Bobo going to be? How's Carson Beck going to be? Losing Stetson Bennett, losing Todd Munkin. And I'll go ahead and say it, Clark. Go ahead. They haven't missed a beat. Yeah, they sure haven't. They haven't missed I a mean, beat. I mean, really. It's been, it's been awesome to watch uh, this, this offense unfold. And somehow it seems like it keeps getting better. Uh, this yeah. team in general, I think, is starting to peak. Uh, it hit its stride here at the, the you know the late half of the well, season, and that's that's important. Yeah, man. I mean, you, you already hear everybody talking, and you know, we got tech. We got to focus on tech, but you you keep hearing about uh, you know Alabama's peaking at the right time. Oh, I'm nervous. Well, hey, why is nobody talking about Georgia's peaking at the yeah. right time? Clark, Georgia's getting healthy at the right time. I know mm-hmm. I had some guys dinged up. Uh, he had McConkey, you know, not really get to go after that first series or so. But it doesn't look like there were some rumors coming out that he might have to have a tight rope, Clark. Yeah. But I think they were shot down from Kirby. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But I don't think he'll go against Tech to be ready. And then, you know, we thought we might have lost Ratledge for the year. That would have been That would have been huge. really bad. That would have been awful, yeah. man, if he if he would be uh, off from that guard position. But it seems like he just had a, uh, a, a bruised knee. Should be good to go. And Ra Ra Thomas, uh, ankle sprain or so. So, it, it didn't what, – what I'm saying is it didn't seem like there was anything that – you might not see those guys really go full force or if at all in Atlanta this Saturday, but for the next game in Atlanta mm-hmm. against Alabama, maybe they're rested, ready to go get plugged back yeah. in. So I, I still think this this team is the healthiest it's been all year, and it's so uncommon to say that in game going into week 14, what, 13, 13 whatever, yeah. 13, and uh, the 12th game of the year, man. But I think that's where we're at, peaking at the right time, guys just uh, playing lights out, and uh, it's exciting to see them where you want to be, Yeah, where you want to be. Yeah, we kept the ball for nearly the whole game. Listen to this. 40 minutes and 58 seconds, almost 41 minutes, to UT's 19 minutes and two seconds. That's just crazy. I mean, of course, this this offense they run, but it also goes to show just how well we ran the football um, and and just – you know, slowed the game down. That's, that's, that's right. what you got to do on the road. That's what you got to do against a team like Tennessee who wants the ball. They want it. They want it every single second of the game. And the longer you can say, no, you're not getting the ball. We're yeah. going to run it down your throats. We're going <laughs> to we're going to drain the tr- uh, the time off the clock. Uh, the better. So. That's it, man. And then when you have a great defense like Georgia does to complement that, and when they're running such a high-tempo, just gimmicky offense, I think Tennessee yeah. runs, and you stone them and they go three and out, man, then you get to put your offense back on the field, wear down their defense more, it's over. Yeah. It and, it's like the, and then you get in the late third quarter, fourth quarter, and you just play Kirby ball and oppose mm-hmm. your will, man, like you said. So. The Patton – I mean, Kirby Death March. I, that's Shout it, man. Nice. And that's why I think that uh I think that uh Hopple will have a hard time ever beating Kirby because of I just don't think that that offense that they have is built to beat what Georgia the foundation is and how they Kirby plays football. Yeah. 
I guess you're right. I, I don't think they will. But anyway, that's a conversation for a different day. Yeah. But let's move on. Sure what Saturday. Yeah. All right, yeah, let's move on. Georgia's defense, Tyke Smith, MVP. I don't care what anybody says. Ought to be an All-American if he's not already on the watch yeah. list or something. I just love Proud how he of attacks, him, man. man. He attacks. He strikes. He's going to go meet a block head on and get off, and he's going to take good angles. That's stuff we saw all day um, on Saturday. I think he had 10 total tackles, eight of them solo. Yeah. He's a great tackler. He is, man. And, uh, again, got to say it, guy who came in 2021 season, preseason, right before the first natty, and All-American from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, didn't really work out with him in 2021. Injury, got him behind, got buried in the depth chart behind some guys, some elite playmakers in that secondary. 2022, not much from him. But this year um, – the adversity's overcome and his patience has all paid off. Yeah. And uh, I'm very proud to have him in that star position. You know, a lot of people at the beginning of the season were saying the young guy who's going to be a household name in Georgia football the next coming years, Joe Nell Aguaro, uh, true freshman, was going to come in and, and, and possibly take his spot. Mm. But Taki is not having none of that, even though Aguaro is a, a talented student, he's going to be really good. But uh, very proud of Taki, man. Yeah. Seems like he shows up week in, week out. That's secondary. Golly. Mm. They're good, man. It's elite, man. That, that, and, you know, when I was talking about early in the season, or preseason, I was saying, you know, this very well could be the best defense George's ever seen. Maybe not necessarily. I mean, I don't know if I can say that now. But it's but good. the secondary? The secondary. Very good, well man. could be. I mean, you, you I could agree. put it up there with some of the best secondaries we've had. I agree. The safeties, the corners. Yeah. Well, uh, well, I know we've talked about one specific cornerback spot. Kamari Laster's highly underrated. Oh, player. he is. And let me ask you this real quick. Who would you say is the best cornerback of the Kirby Smart era? God, there's a slew of them you could choose from. I mean, you could you could put Keeley up there. You could put DeAndre Baker up there. You could put Eric Stokes. Eric Stokes. Maybe I don't know about Tyson Campbell. Yeah, uh, later Tyson Maca Campbell. Kamari. Later Ty Tyson Campbell. But I was gonna say, I think you could put um, Kamari Laster up there with DeAndre Baker and Eric Stokes. Yeah. I think those are the three. Yeah. I think those are the really the three, even though the other one's not mentioned right there, or will really jam up. But I think you could almost make an argument that Laster was better than Baker, even though, I don't know, Baker was good. I think it's Baker than Laster. They're and both, then Stokes. They're both studs. The only times you – yeah, yeah. I mean, Stokes – the only times – Stokes had to – play against some ridiculous competition too i mean you think about the the, the waddles and Devonte smiths and jamar Justin chases jefferson. And jefferson i mean that you know but uh but uh yeah laster it needs to say i think laster's highly underrated man and hey we'll say it i think the best compliment you could give a cornerback is when huh, what did he do during the game i didn't really notice him so i didn't really notice no, he batted he batted down a couple well right. i think he deflected yep. one touchdown but what, what i'm saying is when uh when you don't really i can't really remember too much about a specific cornerback and his play i think that's a compliment <laughs> because he's not getting burned or picked on and i want hey we've talked about him before let's hey, let's say something positive i think dalen everett clark um, I don't remember it. I mean, you know, I think he had a, he had a good game. Yeah. Maybe he's growing and getting there. So, uh, anyway, good good game by secondary. Yeah. Um, after Jalen Wright's 75-yard run, listen to this, Jalen Wright averaged only 1.9 yards per carry. That's just crazy. I mean, we shut him down after that one play, you know. How many and, total rushing yards do they have, Clark? How many did they have? Yeah. Uh, let's check here. Team get, stats. Get the old statistics machine fired up. They had 130 rushing yards. Wow. Georgia had 156, by the way. Wow. Uh, they had 147 passing yards. Georgia had 316, wow. by the way. So they had 130 rushing yards, 75 on one of the first play. Yeah. That's unreal. Mm -hmm. That's uh, Yeah, and I mean, that that first play, too, I think you credit that to just a, a missed gap assignment by a true freshman linebacker. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think it's being held on the play, too. But we're not going to get it. But, <laughs> hey, needless to say, great, great answer to that, man, coming back out and really just shutting it down. Yeah. Uh, and then I loved watching the ball being batted down. There were several times in the game we had five pass deflections. That's big. I mean, if you can hit the ball down at the line of scrimmage, that's huge. Yeah. And if, you you know, if it gets past the line of scrimmage and towards the receiver, yep. being able to swat it away, strip it away, that's huge. Um, we saw that, I think, three or four times mm -hmm. just by a, de a defensive back. And then I want to say smile, maybe batted one down. Yeah. Anyway, that that's good. That creates chaos and that definitely um, hurts the rhythm of the offense. And when, once again, you're playing a team like Tennessee, you're trying to stop that gimmicky stuff. And I think Georgia, right. after the first two drives, we figured it out. Dialed like we in, always man. do against that hypo offense. Dialed in, man. So. Defensive line played good. Um, and uh, it was uh, it was off the races, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love it. I think defense is playing really good. 
now, and I love, you know, you getting younger guys, Christian Miller playing more, Jordan Hall playing more, mm-hmm. get Ingram's Dawkins back, get Warren Brinson back, hopefully yep. coming. So, yep. uh, uh, I think it, the stars are lining good, Clark. I don't think as a Georgia fan overall, when you look at the team picture, where we're at, that you could ask for more. Right. I mean, I and really – And I'll say this one more thing about the defense. C.J. Allen, I'm so glad yeah. he's kind of – back, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, C.J. Allen's playing great. We won't, yes, we won't pop back, but – C.J. Allen, I think he needs this time, these games yeah. right here. You got to play on the road in the SEC. That's big. Um, got to have some experience. Gets, I'd say, a pretty solid SEC offense. He's right? a stud, Clark. He is. He's and then, and then going the, uh, into Tech this week, I'm sure he'll get a lot of playing time as well. But um, this is this is big for his that's development. Right. You know, that, that's the big thing. Even though we've been riddled by injuries throughout the year, you've, this young, very talent t- has gotten experience, which just adds for more depth when you get these guys back going right. into postseason. And mm-hmm. it, it's it's awesome. Oh but, yeah, but yeah, I mean, we talked about it. you stop the run, man, and um, you're not going to have a problem with this Tennessee team, and mm-hmm. uh, that's what George was doing, and uh, and Milton didn't get out and break and extend plays either. So right, great job, great. You know, talk about edge play. I felt you know. There was nothing that containment well, was the, broke that killed for, us. Well, anything. for some reason, it's like they tried to run it up the middle somehow between well, the tackles, and to me, that's just bizarre. I'll tell you this, Clark. You know, more I think more of the teams who get the outside that's killed us in the running game, like Schrader at Missouri, it's the, more of the stretch, mm-hmm. you know, uh, teams who get outside kind of stretch. But uh, I think, uh, and this is for next week, but – you look at teams, man, like Alabama, who's got a bigger offensive line, who likes to run the ball in the middle, you know, maybe slower offensive line, but bigger, and tries to just play bully ball running it between the tackles. And I think that's what you want if you're this Georgia team, this Georgia defensive yeah. line. Because I don't – I mean, but anyway, that's for, that's for next week. Not to get ahead of ourselves. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, anyway. All right. I don't think you're going to run it between the tackles against this Georgia team. Yeah, last unit against Georgia – or against Tennessee that we'll talk about here. Georgia special teams, Peyton hit a long field goal – Stole some uh, momentum back. Yeah, man. And uh, very proud of him and what he's been able to do. And once again, going Feel on the road in the him. SEC. Yeah, yeah That's man. big. Feel to good make those... about him. Yeah. Probably going to need some big, big field goals from him. And I think, you know, he'll do it. He'll do it in the postseason. Anyway. Agreed. Um, and then two big punts by Brett. I thought he punted well. <laughs> you know. I, I, I don't know what it's to say about special teams. There really wasn't a lot happening. Ten, uh, versus Tennessee, you know. Yeah, everybody's doing their job, Clark. Yeah. Uh, I will say, good job, Makai Muse. Even though he didn't get a lot of, you know, return yards, it, mm-hmm. it, that punter was weird, man. He, mm-hmm. he kicked left footed and right footed and had some oh, weird spin. Yeah, and had some weird, weird spin on the ball too. I mean, you could see it, just kind of knuckleball, low line kicks, man. And uh, seemed to me they'd be pretty hard to field. Yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't just the the uh, the traditional punt spiral, big hang time, getting under it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you kind of. Um. Yeah, ball had some movement, kind of more line drive kicks, and he fielded each one of them cleanly. Yeah. And uh, hey, that's big. You know, that you is. You can't take that for granted. So special teams, man, just continue doing their job. Everybody mm-hmm. doing their job, man. And 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 when you do that, and you don't get beat by special team, just carelessness on it, either turning over the football or giving up cheap scores on that, man. Then uh, that's, that's again another special ingredient you yeah. gotta have to win championships that's, that's true George's yeah it's clicking it, it is easy to neglect uh special teams and what they do but uh yeah i mean it's one of those things like if they don't um if 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 nobody hears about them you know that's a good thing yeah it's right? a good thing just like secondary man. yep exactly all right that pretty much wraps up georgia tennessee great game man. great game lots of fun uh it's always fun Woo! Tennessee up there man and i love this late november going up there just putting it yeah. on them at the end of the year yeah. man but they, they were broken they their were. fan base were broken they're still broken and they're going they're heading for a nice maybe if they beat vanderbilt cap off a big eight and four season clark and go to the i don't know they might get an outback bowl bid it's not yeah. an outback bowl anymore but music city bowl bid something maybe get to go now i, I don't know I, I, here's where they go the mayo you, bowl the mayo bowl oh yep. you think so yeah i bet They'd go play like Duke know. or somebody. I mean, good, good for them. Good for them. But I love it, man. It was great. Mm-hmm. Doesn't get any better. It really does. Let's go. All right, last week's games. Let's fly through these. All right. so we had some close games, Adam. Oh, didn't Louisville we? at Miami, 38-31. Yeah. Didn't get to watch this one, but no. Nah. Wow, it's a lot closer. I think Jeff Brom, play. man, when you get a guy, first year guy starting to beat teams like Mario Cristobal, who's in year two, highly paid, highly regarded up there. That that that's not doesn't bode well for the other coach that's, you know, further along in his program development than the first year guy. The program like Louisville beat Miami. Not good for him. Good win for Louisville. Good job, Louisville. Yep. Go Papa Johns. Uh, not, yep. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Uh Washington at Oregon right. State, 22 20. 
We did watch uh, some of this, uh, most of it. I was cold wow. watching that game. You were what now? I was cold watching that game. No worries. Just watching. I mean, I, I, I've never experienced it, but I can only imagine a Pacific Northwest rain in November is not fun no. to be in. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you know, I get what you're like, saying you, now. I was like, wait, so you're, cold, was it cold man. in the cabin or something? No, no, it wasn't cold. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I see it's what you're just saying. There, but you can just feel it chill. I mean, it hits your bones, man. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Close one, man. Washington snuck out of that alive. Yeah, 20. man. I think Oregon State had several chances to actually get back in it yeah. and win it. I respect what Jonathan Smith has done with that program in Corvallis. It's not Coral Vallis like I originally thought. <laughs> well, so I, I thought it was that there. way too. But, uh, but uh, John Smith's done a good job. His uh, development of DJ Uyungle has kind of revitalized his career after it was ruined by Dabo and, and uh, people over there in Clemson. The Colt. The Colt. So, uh, yeah, I mean, good job for them. Close, but hey, Kalen DeBoer and Washington, they just keep winning. So looks like it's going to be a monstrous, fun Friday night viewing of Washington, Oregon for a playoff spot mm. in two weeks. Mm. Man, that's just great. That's going to be really fun. It really is, yeah. God, that's going to be fun, Clark. Yeah. Watching that during the college some- show. Good exciting times ahead. I love that. My college football nerd image is juiced. <laughs> a lot of meaningful football around the whole country. Oh, yeah. Coming up in the next couple of weeks. Kentucky at South Carolina. This was Ooh. not meaningful. 17 14. Carolina not won. Good. Not good. When man. South Carolina wins, it's just bad for America. It's just bad. It was. It's just not good for the people in Lexington and Mark Stoops in particular. Mm. The guy who's what in this double digit of the year, Shane Beamer comes and beats him again. That you know he kind of mild about Beamer. Now Beamer's beat him two years in a row. Ooh. I mean Mark Stoops has lost to Shane Beamer two years in a row. That's bad. That can't be good. So anyway, Kentucky just and then we just talked about Louisville, Jeff Brom in year one, top ten program. Not good for people in Lexington and Blue. Do they get rid of Mark Stoops? No, they can't. They you know, shouldn't. Well, uh, well, I, I'll say this. I, I, there's two sides to this real quick. Man, you know, Kentucky, the, Stoops claims after they lost, got killed by Georgia, we need to fork out more NIL. Stoops is like the eighth highest paid coach in America. Really? Well, yes. Wow. Like makes $9 million a year. $9 million a year. Big buyout, man. And 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 you can say he's getting paid for that. And the expectations is not like with the seven coaches in front of him that need to win conference national championships. I mean, Mark Suits never even won the division, you know. Mm, yeah. Just won a couple 10-game seasons. That's got him that contract. So, you should say, well, if you're paying a coach that much, you expect even more than Mark Stoops is like, well, hey, look what I got to work with and look what we've done, you know, here. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of but, but in the same sense, man, he's getting paid big bucks. To, to, to lose so to lose to South Carolina Shane Beamer and not to go backwards so uh, anyway it, it's definitely not getting comfortable in Lexington yeah. I'll say that but I think they're stuck with him and he would be an idiot to leave and not get the buyout for just getting fired yeah you know what uh, would revitalize Kentucky this what's season that? what's that is if Tyler from Spartanburg gave him a call yeah, Mar- yeah, that yeah would Mark be Stoops good. a call on the call in show yeah maybe like uh, yeah you get um, Taylor from Frankfurt Kentucky. Oh, yeah, yeah, they got That's what they That's what we need. Oh, man. All right, Texas at Iowa State. Daggummit, man. It almost looked like Iowa State was going to win this game and I was going to call my shot, but no, it did not happen. Texas, 26-16. Wow. to 16. It was a little bit closer than people thought, but, yeah. Mm. Anyway. It's going to be interesting to see how Texas finishes, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole landscape, talking about the playoff, what, the, you know, of course, they're right in the thick of the possibilities, but – who are they going to play in the Big 12 Championship? What, Oklahoma State probably? Yeah, it is, so, Oklahoma. I think it is Oklahoma State. So, I mean, yeah, I could see Oklahoma State beating Texas. But it kind of looks like that they're a team that's peaked at the beginning of the year in Tuscaloosa and Quinn Uber's playing good. I know he's been hurt, but he doesn't seem like he's playing as good, man. And Texas isn't a team that scares me right now. But we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. You know another team that doesn't scare me? Who's that? Auburn. No. Did you see oh, that debacle? They got beat. If if nobody, if you're just living under a rock and you did not see this, the New Mexico State Aggies, that's their mascot, right? That's right. Yeah, came into Auburn, Alabama, Opelanka, Jordan Hare State Jordan Hare. at night. At night, yeah, in a hostile environment, mind you, and beat them worse than we did 31 10 it wasn't it like that you know one of these wins where they just get a you know win by a point maybe hit a last second field goal right. something they've been about three touchdowns clark that's bad jerry kill jerry kill was a real blue collar guy clark you know he had some seizures and stuff in minnesota but he has oh. won everywhere he has been at man from i forgot where he was before minnesota um but minnesota to now new mexico state mm. if i'm mississippi state he beat Hugh Freeze forty four to nineteen at 
um, when Hugh Freeze was at Liberty last wow. year. Wow. Then beat them now 31 to 10. Huh. Hey, if I miss the mistake, go call Jerry Kill, man. He's a winner, proven mm-hmm. winner. And, hey, you'll see now that you'll have one SEC West win every year. He owns, <laughs> he owns Brother Hugh. Brother Hugh. He owns the Reverend, And man. what's his – Jerry Kill? Jerry Kill. Jerry Kill. So that's your bolo – for uh, Mississippi State's yeah. head coaching. Yeah, fantasy. I mean, absolutely. The guy, you know, and he's got one of those – he runs kind of that offense, man, where, yeah, where programs like Mississippi State – and that's another thing with Mark Stoops in Kentucky. You can't line up and try to play Bama or Georgia mm-hmm. style and expect to beat them. When you do rattle off wins every, against them every now and then, you got to – I mean, I hate to mention this, but a Paul Johnson type, triple option type, yeah. kind of what Mike Leach did, kind of one of those deals kind of against the norm that's kind of hard to – Prep. Prep for, you know, and and, and and people eventually catch on. But you get a couple years there where you catch some teams by surprises. By surprise. And uh, Jerry Kill is one of those guys, man. Yeah. So, uh, good on him for smoking Hugh. Uh, Hugh said they're going to have a very physical Tuesday practice. Oh, oh okay. For the first one. Oh, sounds oh, yeah. like uh, something that their big brothers yeah. east of them do. Well, that's been doing every uh, week. Yeah, I was about to say. Know, but now they're all of a sudden going to wrap up a big fit and kind of see who wants to, to be, you know. Yeah, be, who wants to be a millionaire? To, yeah, kind of one of those guys who wants to be that guy, you know, step up and represent right the family over there, the family and hope like the it. other cult for for the Iron Bowl. So I mean, a lot of, a lot of turmoil. They had some momentum riding. I mean, smoke Sam Pittman and yeah, the Iron Bowl had some build up kind of. And then after that, it just I know. Well, let's talk about this just for a second. Okay, let's talk about the biggest cults in college football. We got Clemson, Auburn, A and M. Any more that you can think of that yeah, is Colts. Yeah, I would um I would say though, even though I despise Auburn and Clemson more, A and M kind of makes me a little uncomfortable more than any of them. No, really? Like there's some dark their traditions and stuff. Just just it's just a little cringy. Hmm. To me. To me. Oh, we're talking that, about the midnight yell. Oh, uh, yeah, and the male cheerleaders, man. Yeah, it's I mean it's just weird. I mean, whatever. Uh, look, 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 look. What just 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 weird stuff, man. Hmm. Well, they got a lot of money. and Yeah, we'll know. see who they hire. I don't, I don't know. know. Kelsey sent me something, my wife, just a minute ago that said uh, A&M expected to offer Georgia's Kirby Smart 20 or $30 million. I just sent back a laughing emoji. <laughs> no, I, I got to think, man, you're not – Kirby's not ever leaving Georgia. No. And the next time, when he leaves, it's going to be to his lake house at Lake Oconee. Or the NFL. I could I could see him nah, going to the NFL before – No, I, what I'm yeah, saying oh, is yeah, if before another football, college. Football right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's built – He's built this from the ground, not from yep. the ground up. I should say he took off where Mark Rick left. And, yeah, Mark and is just completely. I mean, Rick insane. Rick laid a good foundation for him, and then I mean, both of them just did great. I mean, they it's did. just been amazing. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> We're blessed. All right, this week's pick 'em. We got some great games. Like I said earlier, we've got the Civil War Friday, Friday night. This will actually be during the Collins Show, or not the Collins Show, rather. Row sixty, row 60 after dark. Some good discussion. Yeah, there ought to be a lot of good discussion with this. Love one. That, Oregon man. State at Oregon, eight thirty, yeah. Fox, and hey, don't sleep on the Beavers, right? I would say that, Clark. But if you remember last year, Dan Lanning's group went to Corvallis, and Johnson Smith popped them, mm-hmm. and I just don't think. The way Bo Nix and Dan Lanner are playing right now and the way that game ended last year, they've had this one circle for a while. Oregon State, big kind of let down. Mm-hmm. Had, you know, a lot of hype last week at home against Washington. Just came up short. Uh, then a short week turnaround going to Alton Stadium in Eugene. Oregon, you know, feels like they can win this one. Beat, revenge, avenge the loss against Washington in the conference championship and uh, get a playoff bid. Give me Dan Land and the Ducks, man. Yeah, I'll stick with the home team. Uh, Oregon, they are just playing lights out. And I gotta I gotta say, Bo Nix looks pretty daggum good. Yeah. Granted, they are playing Pac 12 defense out there. But hey, they are clicking in all cylinders, and Oregon's defense actually looks pretty, pretty good too. So mm-hmm. this is gonna be a team I, I expect to be in the playoff, actually, is Oregon. I do think Oregon's gonna be it just Washington. feels like they'll beat Washington. Though. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. came so close the past two years mm-hmm. and um just kind of lost it there at the end. Some bad coaching you can call going for it on fourth down. Yeah. It feels like neutral environment, Las Vegas controlled environment too, Clark. It mm-hmm. won't be in the rain like it was in Seattle. Right. In early October. Uh, I know this is for next week, but yeah, but still, that's why. I'm, needless to say, I think Oregon's not overlooking Oregon State because Oregon State beat them last year. Yeah, ought to be a good game. Uh, let's talk about the Whoa, game, man. The game. I mean, this is the one that everybody's looking forward to. Uh, Ohio State at Michigan, twelve o'clock, Fox, big noon kickoff. You'll mm. probably get Joel Clatt and uh, what's his name, Gus Johnson. Yeah, I think star so. stood lineup. Hey, I love Gus Johnson. Do you really? Oh yeah, you really do. McKay. Shout out to him, patron. 
<laughs> he can do the best Gus Johnson in, impersonation ever. It's unreal. Yeah. But anyway, Adam, Ohio State, you like the Buckeyes or you like the Wolverines? Can you imagine the pressure Ryan Day has right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't fire a guy who's won as many games as he has, but people will not be happy. Because this is, this is a playoff game. This is the first playoff game of the year. The second one will be in Atlanta in two weeks. Um, the Michigan turmoil, Ohio State's made a big deal about it. Really, I think what you hear is Ryan Day, you know, has kind of led the charge about it. He gets uh, Jim Harbaugh kind of suspended. So, Sharon Moore, the offense coordinator, is going to be interim head coach. So, if, Jim, if Ryan Day loses to Michigan's interim for the third straight year in Ann Arbor, not people will not be happy with it, man. Michigan kind of just – I just think there's been too much adversity. It could be the flip side. They'll be fired up, circled this one in Ann Arbor. Give me a high stake. Oh, wow. I did not expect that. I'm going to stick with Michigan despite not having – uh, what's his name? Old Jim Harbaugh. Clark Griswold is what I like to call him. Oh, yes. he, he looks just like Clark Griswold to me. <laughs> anyway, no, I, I, I like Michigan. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, though. I watched them against Penn State. They didn't really impress me offensively. Defensively, they look great. Yeah. Of course, Penn State's offense. You know, I, it, I think this is going to be a good litmus test for everybody it's to see. It's going to be fun to watch just yeah. on the outside. And what I love about it is usually Georgia, Georgia Tech's going on right when this game's mm-hmm. keeping them. Just kind of keep it up with it. Right. Georgia, Georgia Tech, usually the past two years has ended before this game. Mm-hmm. So you get to see the end of it kind of walking out of the stadium or whatnot. Yeah. So what I love about this is we get to sit down and watch the thing in the uh, entirety this They'll year. be good, so yeah. It's going to be fun, man. I mean, any college football fan – even if you despise both of them like we do, Clark, you can't not not be excited about this right, game. Right, right. Yeah, I'm going to stick with Michigan, though, and I think this is the second playoff team right here, Michigan. There you go, man. Well, I think it's safe to say whoever wins this one is in for mm-hmm. sure, probably. Because you got you got a date with Iowa next week, a pillow fight, oh if you will. Gosh. Iowa, God bless them. Just what can't... if they upset? Wait, wait, wait. wait. What, if, right. what if Michigan or Ohio State wins this game, and then they go get beat? In the Big Ten Championship by Iowa nine by, to, Iowa. by nine nine to three yeah nine to uh, <laughs> nine right. to three three to two nine to, three to, five, to two yeah, three to two something like that that's what it would be oh if Iowa yeah there's no, <laughs> whoo man but uh, I wonder yeah. what the over under is for Ohio State Michigan it's got to be like twenty eight or something I don't know man. I don't know it's got to be low at it so yeah I'm, I'm excited that's gonna be oh good defensive battle. It. Mm-hmm. A lot of passion, a lot of hatred. Did you talk about some confrontation and fan interactions up there in Ann Arbor, especially with recent events with Michigan? Mm-hmm. I would love to be a fly on the wall at that. Me too. Kentucky at Louisville, 12 o'clock ABC. Oh, man. I thought this would be kind of fun because Louisville, Adam, is 10-1. and one. Yeah. And assuming they win this game and assuming they win the ACC championship, if they were to somehow beat Florida State. Yeah. Do you even put – do you put them in? With their one loss being to Pittsburgh? Nah, nah, you can't, man. Because there's even discussion right now, Clara, Jordan Travis lists – Florida State team, even if they go 13 and 0, there's not they're a sure lot for the playoff, which mm-hmm. I think is crazy. I don't think I do you too. should punish the other players and everybody because you think that because they lost that one guy, they shouldn't get in. Well, I think if they go 13 and 0 and it shapes up, they should have a spot. Yeah, even and, though and they might get boat raced first round, it still right. And Josh Pate, shout out to Josh Pate, yep. late kick. Yep. He was saying the same thing. How it would be ridiculous if the playoff just let out, you know, or didn't allow Florida State into the playoff. Um, I think you're right, you know. Um, you, how, how are you going to say that without Jordan Travis, this Florida yeah. State team's no good? I mean, God, that's a that's a harsh accusation. It is. Well, and the argument, man, is uh, Ohio State in 2014, the first ever right. playoff year with Cardell Jones. Now, I don't think this uh, Florida State team has an Ezekiel. Well, they got two stud wide receivers, and I don't think they're as good. But, hey, they had to start a third-string quarterback against Alabama and then against Oregon and won the national championship. Right. So, I don't think you can penalize them, but I don't think, needless to say, the strength of schedule that Louisville's had plus a bad loss to Pittsburgh is going to do that. But still, if Jeff Brown wins the ACC in his first year, heck of a job, man. Yeah. But this game right here, Clark, we just talked about Kentucky, how Mark Stoops is feeling. Two programs, completely different um, trajectories at Louisville, Clark. Sold out. Oh, really? So, yeah. They're fired up about it in wow. Louisville, baby. Yeah, they're going to be rocking. I think Oh, that Mark Stoops – is going to rise to the occasion. Really? And do what he does, and that's beat Louisville. Wow. Hmm. That's interesting, Adam. Which I picked against Louisville like the past two or three weeks we've had him, and I've gotten I've lost every single one of them. So I'm probably gonna lose this one, but I'm gonna go with Kentucky. Well, knowing what you just said, I'm gonna go with Louisville because 
I'm just, I'm just going to stick with the home teams, I think. Except okay. for this next one, Adam. Oh, the Iron Bowl. Right. Alabama at Auburn, 3.30 CBS. Ba, 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 you know, do, do you feel that? Yeah, the jingle. Oh, yeah, I still love the jingle. Man. I mean, I do too. It's just taking a bit. Yeah, it's lost its luster, I guess, when you hear Gary Danielson and, you. And, and and at his age and I I don't know, okay, know. all right. I do like last that. Iron Bowl. Gary Danielson would be calling last Iron Bowl on CBS. This will probably now be an eight o'clock ABC game with Kirk Herb Street and Chris mm -hmm. Fowler going forward. I like that. I'll be okay with yep. that. Uh, Adam, had I not seen what I saw this past Saturday <laughs> against New Mexico State, I'd actually say, hey, Auburn's going to give them a fight. And they still will. I, I do think they still will. But well, Alabama's going to win this pretty handedly so by three touchdowns. So, even though they just got boat raced by New Mexico State, do you think that this Auburn team is better than the one in 2021 with Brian Harson that went overtime with the, that 2021 Alabama team, which is arguably better than this year? Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. Gus Malzahn beat Saban in 19. Beat Saban in 17. Beat Saban in 13. So, I guess really the only kind of lopsided Alabama win in Jordan Hare has been 15. Right. So, 21 overtime, 19 loss, 17 loss, 15, I don't know what the score was there, 13 loss. I don't know, Clark. Uh, obviously, you can't base it off of that. But I, I think it will be rocking. But I 100% agree with you. That just kind of deflates everything in Alabama. And I hope Alabama wins kind of. Because you know, I don't want them ticked off, you know. Right. Kind of just, I, I don't know, but then maybe they might. I, Whatever. It doesn't matter to me what happens. We'll see what happens. And You're going to take Alabama? I'm going to take, uh, I think Alabama's going to win. Yeah, yeah, me too. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> About three touchdowns, I would say. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we'll see. Florida State at Florida, 7 o'clock ESPN. Adam, I was about to leave this one off, but you said, hey, put it on the pick em, Yeah, so. we need to put it on the pick em, Clark. You know why? Because both of them are starting backup quarterbacks. Wow. I did not think about Graham that. Graham Marks broke his collarbone, and then Jordan yeah. Travis had his nasty deal, Man. which I hate that for both of them because mm -hmm. both of them are having good years. I mean, Graham Mertz, you have to say, the preseason speculation on him definitely was not uh, was not uh, what you what he did. He performed well, and uh, season cut short. But, yeah, so backup quarterbacks here, Clark, and Gainesville. In and Gainesville. the Swamp. What you think? Ooh. Oh, man, Adam, I, I tell you what. I hate, I hate this. This I'm going to have to go wash my mouth after I say okay. this, but I'm going to take Florida. I'm, I'm going to take them with the upset. You know, I thought about it, but it, since you said Florida, I'll go Florida State. Okay. I definitely <laughs> could see it. I, I, that's why I said put it on there because I think this would be a fun game. Yeah. It'll be happening during the Georgia Georgia Tech game, but to keep up with on the bottom ticker while you're watching Georgia Georgia Tech because mm -hmm. this one could get sideways. It could. It, it really, it could. really could. It could potentially. So, I don't know. That that would kind of. In the eight, and and also what you need to root for is who's Texas playing? I don't even know who Texas Texas playing. is but, playing Texas Tech. Oh yeah, that's right. So you need to root for Texas Tech. You need to root for um uh them against uh, Oklahoma State in the Big Twelve Championship the next week. And honestly, Clark, if you want it that you think there's a scenario, we're not thinking like this because Georgia's going to go thirteen zero beat Alabama. But if you want there to be a possibility that Georgia get in the playoffs like what happened in two thousand twenty one when they unfortunately lost the SEC championship, I think you got to have Florida State and Texas get beat, Clark. Which means you got to pull for Florida. I'm not going to because I'm going to go the route that we're past the we need so and so to right, win for right. us to get to so and so. Yeah. It used to be we need so and so to win for us to go to the SEC championship. Exactly. But I think we're even past not even just going to the SEC championship, but going to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. We don't need anybody mm. to win. Anybody doing anything because Georgia takes care. Of, Georgia stands on their business, Clark. Josh. Josh. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. We stand right. on our business. We stand Josh. on our business, Josh. Oh, we stand on business. Nerd. But did he go to? I feel like he went to Georgia Tech. It, it, it seems like, like the right? kind of guy to looks go to like Georgia an accountant State. that went yeah, to Georgia yeah. Tech or something. But yeah, so anyway, anyway. all right, yeah. Clemson at South I Carolina, seven thirty, SEC Network. This is a huge meteor game. I can't stand either one of what these teams. What if Shane but... beats them for the second year? Oh my gosh! What would Tyler from you think Tyler from Spartanburg's going? Hey, I'm sure he is going to mm -hmm. be in attendance at, in the cockpit. God, man, I'm telling you, this is a wild game right here. Because I, I, th if South Carolina wins this, they're bowl eligible. Yeah. They're fighting for bowl eligibility. Meanwhile, Clemson is fighting for their dignity. Right. For maybe Dabo's job. Nah, not, not that far. But you get know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Adam? Uh, I think Dabo and Clemson going to win it, man. Oh. I think they are. I hate to say it. I wish I'd go South Carolina. I think it'll be closer. I don't think it'll be a blowout by any means. But, yeah, give me Dabo and Clemson. Okay. Man, by about, I don't know. 
Uh, probably two touchdowns, maybe. Wow. All right. Adam, I'm going to stick with South Carolina. Are you really? I okay. really am. All right. I, I hope think, you're right. I think somehow, some way, they're going to take the momentum from last week, Kentucky. Yep. Take it into this week. Yep. Their line's got to block a lot better, yep. I believe. But, yep. hey, South yep. Carolina might can do it. Yep. I, That's I, right. I believe in them. I like it. All right. Moving on, Georgia, Woo! Georgia Tech. We're about there, folks. But first, let's play a little trivia. All right, let's a do it. Georgia, then, Georgia Tech trivia. Why not? You have not seen these, no, correct? I have okay, not good. seen these. And I've tried to make these a little bit more challenging because oh, the past few boy. weeks you've been just absolutely flying through. So, yeah. let's see. Let's just test your college football knowledge here. All right. All right. In 2000, mm. the year 2000, yeah. Georgia had two players – with more than 100 receiving yards against Georgia Tech. Okay? One was a wide receiver, and the other one was a tight end. Can you name these two dogs? Crap. I know the tight end had to have been Randy McMichael. Correct. Yes. You got one. And the other was a receiver. Terrence Edwards. That is a heck of a guess. <laughs> Uh, it probably it probably would have been oh. no it probably wouldn't have been Terrence Edwards literally oh. any other game. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of the number he wore. Hold up just a second. I'll, I'm going to give you a hint here. That may be a dead giveaway. I don't know. Oh man. Any more receivers you can think of from the year 2000? Oh man, you you got me. I do not know. Let me help you here. He was number 18. When when I say this, you're going to go, oh, how can I forget? You want me to tell you? Yeah. Damian Gary. That go. <laughs> Were you about to say that? No, I was just, I should have read. It's about okay. Damian it's Gary. Okay. When I Look. think about Damian Gary, I think about months and then the Damian Gary punt return, the hobnail boot. Right, game. right. God. It's okay. Man. It's all right. Mm. Hey, Terrence Edwards really was a heck me. of a guess. Though. That really hurts me. That's all right. Look, I put you on the spot. Yeah, and that I had was to do good. It. That was good. That, that got me. I'm, I'm a little nervous about the next couple. I might go nah, over here. You got this one. Maybe. All right, the last time Georgia Tech – let's let's take a moment just, just for a second, and let's just give a clap for all Georgia right, Tech for right, making a bowl right. game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, Georgia yep. Tech. The last time Georgia Tech went to a bowl game was 2018. Which right. bowl game did they play in, and who did oh they gosh. play? That's <laughs> tough. You do, you do. Right, look, I had to ramp it up, all right? Let me give you a hint. This bowl is played up north. They went to the Pinstripe Bowl. That's a great guess. Not the Pinstripe Bowl. I believe it's in Detroit, maybe. The Motor City Bowl? Maybe it's not in Detroit. I don't know. <laughs> the, uh, the, I'll give you uh, one more guess. Oh, my gosh. The um, Do you know who they played? That might help. No. No? No idea. No idea. I don't know why I remember this one. You remember this game? Yes, I do. Who did they play? It was Paul Johnson's last, right? It was Paul Johnson's last game, yep. Oh, God. Did and they I play a Mac team? It. No, it was not a Mac. Big Ten team. Let me help you. Yeah, the Fenway Bowl. No, not Fenway Bowl. They played Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, I never would have got that. In the Quick Lane Bowl. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm two for two. I got it. killing me now. This is rough. This yeah, is rough. This, I don't know. Listen, unless you're just a diehard Georgia Tech fan, I don't know if you would have gotten but, that. So. That, was, that was insane. Man. Oh, man. All right, this one should be a little bit easier, I think. You may have to do a little bit more mental gymnastics. All right, all right. Bobby Dodd Stadium ranks ninth in the ACC for seating capacity. Oh, God, I already know where this is going. Listen, there are five other ACC schools who have less seats than Tech. Oh, okay. Can you name them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wake Forest. Wake Forest is the bottom. They are 14th with 31,500 fans. Duke. Duke is 13th. You're just going on the list. Boston College. Boston College. Yes. Listen, you are one, two, and three. There's two more. Two more. Uh, it's not Syracuse because Carrier Dome seems like it's bigger. Right? It is Syracuse. Syracuse. It's Syracuse. It is Syracuse, yeah. <laughs> Syracuse. Syracuse has 49,057 right, so seats. One more. Yep. Two more. One, one more. more. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right so, you, right. Got, you got Wake Forest, Duke, Boston College, Syracuse. There's one more ACC school. Well, ACC school program. I'm not thinking about. This is obvious. Um, it's kind of tricky, though. Uh, la, 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 la. Man, this is tough. This is tough. A lot of dead air right now. I'm, I'm trying to uh, – no, let, let me talk good. through my – think, think, think it through. All right, Virginia. 
That is, I think there's eight. Oh. Um, so. Um, dang. NC, no, it's not NC State. Not NC State. Um, I'm trying to think what other schools are up north besides Boston College that came in the ACC. I don't think there's definitely not Virginia Tech, definitely mm-hmm. not Clemson, definitely mm-hmm. not Florida State, mm-hmm. definitely not Miami. There's one. There's, there's one. There's one just obvious. I'm just missing. I can just, I just think, know. Think basketball for I a second. I think, ba- oh, uh, uh, well. Duke, right. North Carolina. North Carolina. Really? Yep. I would have figured yeah. they would have been a bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, wow. It does All seem right, bigger then. on TV. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. It? Yeah. Wow. So 50, they have 50,500 fans. That's, that's that was cool. good, Clark. That was Thank good. You. That was real good. I enjoyed that. Uh, we'll give you one out of three, right? Yeah. And, and well, right. And you got Pick Randy McMichael. Yeah. Randy McMichael. Half of that's the first one, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. You came. Yeah. You had some good fun facts on that one. Got me. Stumped me. Well, humbled me. I Hey, no, you, you're you're a college football mind. And trivia legend. Oh, that's but, good uh, stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. I had to, I had to, like I said, I did a lot of research well, on those. You, you, you definitely, <laughs> definitely did right on that. I didn't just type into Chat GPT. Hey, Woo! give me three that's right. random trivia that's questions. Right. So that's right. Anyway, well, hey, if you're enjoying this episode, just uh, let's let's take a moment here. That's right. Go leave us a like, please, on YouTube. Subscribe. That would help us out a lot. Yeah, uh, and that. Helps you never miss a video. And message us on our Row 60 Facebook page. Yeah. Tell us where you're from. Tell us, mm-hmm. you know, you're Georgia fan. What you think about the game. Interact with us, man. Yeah. So if Love you've never it. done it before, never talked with us, we would enjoy that. Absolutely. All right. Here we go. Boom. Clean, old-fashioned Boom. hate. Georgia, Georgia Tech. Ah. I love yeah, this man. time of year. It's great. I love it, man. I'm excited. Bobby Dodd Stadium, Clark. You know, Georgia has not won, not lost in Bobby Dodd Stadium since the millennium. Yeah. Since Y2K. <laughs> yeah. Since, I mean, think about the world events that have happened since the last time, and they really shouldn't have lost that game. It was the mysterious Jasper Saints fumble, fumble in 99. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, hey, you know, Rick comes in in 01. I mean, Donnan was really a good coach for Georgia, but there was one flaw Jim Donnan had, Clark. What was that? He lost three straight games to Georgia Tech. Mm. 01, Rick changes that, man, and Rick only lost to Georgia Tech two, two times. Two times, yep. yeah. Uh, 08 and 14. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, was a yellow jacket killer. So, you got to tip your hat to Mark Rick. And Kirby's just lost to him one time his first year in 16, which was, you know. But, uh, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it, you know, it's, this is a fun game in the sense of you always think, should George even play this game? What do you have to yeah. gain from it? But when you talk to the, the Tech fan base and you go to Bobby Dodd and you see them, man, there, and that's when you really interact with the the. The tech. When you think of tech, the nerds. You're right, man. They they deserve an annual beatdown. They sure year. do. Every year, every year they deserve an annual beatdown. And what I love about this rivalry is you got two head coaches who hate the other school. Now you have Brent Key who absolutely hates Georgia. He's made that evident with the, the post you made, and uh, he played for Georgia Tech. You got Kirby who hates Georgia Tech. Played for Georgia, man. That's what it's all about. That's what's exciting about it. And I'm I'm fired up about it. And I think Tech fans got a little bit more hope than they have in the past few years. And uh. Let's see what happens. What did you say, Clark? Dude. That Brent Key said something about last oh, week. Oh gosh, yeah, no, no, no. After he beat, um, after he beat North Carolina at home and Bobby Dodd, this is a couple weeks ago, or maybe three weeks ago. He oh, said after the this Florida is, game. Yeah, yeah so I guess it was four weeks ago. Yeah. Holy crap! Gosh, this November's falling by. Anyway, he said that the ACC was the most competitive conference. Come on, guys! And yeah, he was on ACC Network yeah. their post game oh, yeah. show, which is stupid. And uh, he was talking about how this was just the most competitive conference. And it may be for the battle of the mids, you know, yeah. the, the yeah. averages. Right. I don't know. Or basketball or something. I just I don't get it. So, anyway, yeah, 112th meeting, Adam. Actually, wow. I th- I, actually, I think it's 116th because if you add in the five ties, yeah, that'd be 116th. Yeah. That's 116th awesome. meeting between these two. I thought you said Brent Key said something about now let's go beat the blank out of Georgia. No, I didn't say that. Oh, I thought who said I thought he said that after the Syracuse game. Oh, he may have. I don't know. I, I could be wrong. We wow. Be spreading false stuff. But, but yeah. So Interesting. Uh, well, yeah, Georgia leads the series 70-41-5. Woo! We yeah. are currently a 24-point favorite wow. over the nerds. 24 points. That's the first time I've seen it. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Huge, huge spread there. You taking, Woo! taking the dogs may. to cover that? Ooh. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah, course they are. Of course they are. 24 points, that's nothing. That's right. I mean, we beat Tennessee by 28. Yep. yep. Uh, Tech enters this game 6-5. and five. Losses to Louisville, Ole Miss, Bowling Green. That's great. Oh, man. Boston College and little and old little Clemson. little old Clemson. Yeah, they got slacked in Death Valley. I saw that. Sure yeah. did. Uh, Tech's offense 
this is literally the one note I have on these guys, and I don't take yeah. notes on Tech because we're going to beat them. Just never see. Yeah, never watch them play. Really, I mean, you forget about them until this time. Yeah. Right. It's not like I, the other rivals we got, but but I will say there's nobody worse to lose to. No, oh, nobody yeah. worse to lose to in 14, 16. That was just whew, mm, and 08. That bad, was just bad. devastating. Yeah. Uh, Tech's offense. So Haynes King, listen to this, Adam. Tied dead last in the FBS for thrown interceptions this year. He has. 15, Let's go, baby. Let that defense. Let that secondary heat. Baby. Yep. Let that secondary heat. So let me ask you. So former Texas A&M quarterback Haynes King. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. lighten it up yeah. for the other team. Yeah. So let me ask you, which Georgia DB, because it's almost a guarantee at this point, is going to get a pick? Sad Malachi bad. starts. Do and Javon so? Buller. Two oh, picks. two? Yes, you sir. calling it? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. I like that. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's say that, man. And, uh, hey, I love it. You know, you got Georgia Tech, Haynes King, old SEC guy, Texas mm -hmm. A&M, got, kind of ran off from there, so went to Tech, and had a respectable year for Tech. Dominic Blaylock, man, a guy I respect, Clark. Yeah. Uh, I really like what Dominic Blaylock talked about him last year a lot. Went through a lot here at Georgia. Just kind of got past on the depth chart. Had some adversity with a couple injuries. But uh, seemed to found a home at Georgia Tech. Um, hope he does not have a good game. No. This, but I think he's, you know, maybe had a good set. I hadn't really kept up with him. Saw him on the field a couple times. Brett Seether, a tight end from Georgia who I think caught a – few touchdown passes for really? him and getting a lot of PT for Tech. So Buster Faulkner's their OC, who was kind of the quarterback's coach. Um, from when Stetson was there, kind of mm -hmm. one of Stetson's main guys for the past few years. And then um, came in with Munkin. And then, uh, hey, our old friend Kevin Sherry, Clark. Oh, yeah. Old name Golly. for old Pruitt. Pruitt's mm -hmm. best friend, the, you mm -hmm. know, from the Rick Dares and early Kirby days, uh, is their co-defensive coordinator. So, some right. familiar faces now in the flats Very with Brent Key, the Tech alum, man. Yeah. So. Well, I'm ready to go. I don't really know too much about Tech. I, I don't either. I, I'm just reading off ESPN I just know they've done here. Better this. Yeah, they've got a their leading rusher is Jamal Haynes. Okay. He's a sophomore from Loganville, Georgia. Woo, man. 5'9, 180. Dang. And uh I mean, he gets the bulk of the carries. I think they're they're similar or their offense is kind of similar to ours, yeah. which is weird yeah. to say because right. you know, five years ago, right. not five years ago, about seven years ago. You can't say that. Yeah, they run um, the triple option, man. Right. But uh he has eight hundred and fifty yards on the ground, 141 carries, seven touchdowns. Let's go. <laughs> their leading receiver, just throwing some names out here for y'all. Leading receivers, I believe. He's Singleton Jr. Eric Singleton, Eric Singleton, Singleton, Jr. Singleton Jr. He's oh, a good. freshman, 5'11", 173 from Douglasville. From Douglasville. Oh, good. Good so, for Eric, man. Awesome. Yeah, number 13. Yeah, I mean, you know, old, old Brent's trying to build a culture up there. You know, the tech people, they rushed the field after they beat North Carolina. They were all excited. They were ready. You know, they're already trying to think. What if we're the ones in George's win streak, Clark? You get on stingtalk.com. Oh my you get a, if you ever, ever wanted to just find some hate for Georgia Tech, go to stingtalk.com and read the, the thread THWG. Oh, boy. And you you look at them, and you look at them, they hate you. They do. They, they sure hate do. you. They hate Georgia fans. Like, I, I really don't think there's another fan base who wishes more ill will, a lot, you know, further than what it should be when college football team, than, than the majority of the Georgia Tech fan base. Of course, we know some good ones, some local ones, but they're not the the ones you see in Bobby Dodd. Who That's every, true. Every biannual year, it's a different breed. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is a big game. Uh, you really don't think about it as much. I mean, yeah, you, you get more fired up for the Floridas, the, the Clemsons, the Auburns, Tennessees. Uh, more, but this game's huge. This game means a lot, and you don't realize how much you do despise them, at least to me, until you actually yeah, lose to them. Yeah, and uh, it's gonna be big. They're gonna be excited Saturday. They're gonna have a big jacket. Walt first night game at Bobby Dodd uh, since 2009. When they were ranked number seven, we were unranked. We were six and five at the time, and we beat them 30 to 24. That we run this state game. I remember sitting in the upper level, man, and watching Caleb King just bust a 75 yarder mm -hmm. right at the half, right at the beginning of the second half towards this man and the first night game since 2010 night game yeah 2010 was a night game in Athens yeah uh, that was like a 41 14 beat down I believe that something was along fun. those lines so mm -hmm. uh anyway uh it's gonna be big I think it's gonna be a uh, a big environment I think there's gonna be oh, a lot really? of red and black yeah yeah I think a lot of red and black there and and, and as big as the environment as tech people are gonna come to this court and think man what if we are the ones to beat number one Georgia and in, in, you you know in the win streak which that sounds right. that's, a, that's a nightmare. Yeah. That's a but oh it's not God. realistic. It's not no. going to happen, man. This not is Sanford happen, Stadium but, uh, Juniors, I like yeah. to call it. Yeah. 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 This, joke is, by uh, coach. this team's dialed in, man. They're definitely not going to be overlooking tech for Alabama. Kirby makes sure of that because uh, that's, again, the personal connection of a guy who knows what robberies mean. He's not going to overlook Georgia Tech, Clark. And, yeah. uh, I think I, it's going to be a good game, and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm I remember, ready for it. I remember uh, 2017, Thanksgiving break. Yeah. It was after practice. Kirby was kind of addressing the team, doing his uh, post-practice speech. 
And I very vividly remember him saying, I hate these MFers. Yeah. That's what he said. After he got, because, I mean, yeah. they beat him. They, yeah. Tech beat Georgia and then 16. And yeah. I remember the feeling of just total disgust. Disgust. That's yeah. right. That's right, man. I mean, it, it's tough. You know, uh, when you win against them, it's not the, the most fulfilling, at least as, as like winning in Jacksonville, right? And in, in a sense. But when you lose, there's nothing worse. Nothing worse. And uh, again, like you said, if anybody ever thought, man, why don't we play tech? You know what? No, nah, no. Nah. When you, it, you might forget about it, but because you really don't encounter many of the, 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 the ones we talk about that we see in Bobby Dodd when we go over there biannually. But when you do encounter those ones that you see in Bi Bobby Dodd biannually, when you see their forms, what they talk, what they think about Georgia, their respect for the, what they did when Larry Munson had a moment of silence oh when, uh, when they died, what they do when they celebrate when Uga dies, some of that stuff, man, that we talked about earlier in the show is college football stuff. You realize, man, they deserve a beat down every single year. Mm -hmm. Every single year that they deserve their annual tail whooping. And since 2016, that is exactly what they've got every year. This year won't be any different. Clark. Oh, yeah. Man. Boom. I we're going to sit in that them. upper deck, man, and we're going to sit there and we're going to see the top of Mercedes Benz Stadium where we'll win an SEC championship uh, the following week after another beatdown of Georgia Tech. It's an annual tradition, and uh, can't wait, man. Man. Can't wait. Going to be go. a lot of fun. Let's go. Hey, if you're coming to this game, let us know. Send That's us right. A, send us a That's right. DM on the socials. We'd love to see you there. Uh, we're probably. I yeah. mean, I'd imagine we'd be sitting in the upper deck. We haven't That's bought right. our tickets. No, nah, but I'm sure we'll be up there. We usually are. Yep. Usually, except to 21, we were lower level. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll let people know where we're at. We love a contingent of folks try to oh, get yeah. around us and let's have a good time. Get it's, rowdy. It's going to be a lot of red and black rowdy, in that stadium, That's Adam. Right. It's going to be lots of fun, like you said. Hate them. We get to see Hate them. Mercedes Benz on the horizon. Uh, just a few miles down the road. Take the over that deck. thing and some red and blue. Wear red to the game. This is the yes. game where you wear, yes. wear red. I was actually no about white. wearing this thing, and I'm like, nah, you got to wear red at Tech, man. Yeah. Let it stand out. Exactly. Especially, you know, you have them stadium lights glistening in the red. Ooh. And uh, it's going to be fun. Mm. It's going to be a good time. It's almost a neutral site game, honestly. You dang yeah. right. Let's All right. Go. I'm going to give you my score prediction. You give me Get yours, it, baby. and we'll wrap this thing up. Woo! Adam, I'm feeling really, really good about this upcoming Saturday. Why can you? I mean, how can you not? I mean, how can you not? It's Glory tech. Days, baby. It's tech. Yeah. Dogs put up seven touchdowns, 49-13. Yeah. Yeah. Inject that into my Ooh, veins. I hate baby. tech, man. It does not get any better than just no, it does. beating a mess out of them. No, it and does. they're going on and playing in Atlanta for a second straight week. That's right. Uh, That's right. Bend, so give me the dogs, big. 49-13. Give it to me. Steamroll. Give it to me, baby. I love it. 11-0 again, Clark. Talked about third straight year. 11-0. Let's make it 12-0 going to Atlanta. No better team to do that to break the SEC win streak record against an, uh, our rival, Georgia Tech, man. Uh, hey, Georgia Tech fans are excited about it. But Georgia is just on a different level, Clark. As much as Georgia Tech's program has improved with Brent Key, you got to give them that. I would say, you know, what they're going to be. I don't know what they're going, what their record is, but it's better than they have been. But nah, man, Georgia's just in a different universe. The brand of football they play, man. And I think there's going to be some guys that uh, we're going to put on the shelf a little bit this week, and that means guys like Dylan Bell and others, opportunity to shine. Uh, and these are games where you make legendary status in these rivalry games. You talk about Buck Blue in '78 as a freshman coming in. Corey Allen catching up. Oh, it couldn't have happened in 97, Clark. You think about uh, the uh, 2002 beatdown with uh, David Green. You think about 04, Reggie Ball, fourth and dumb. 05, Tim Jennings gets a big pick there, man. The 15 to 12 months since last great call when Tony Taylor got the fumble, man. 31-17 Atlanta in 07. The 09 game that I alluded to, man. Alec Ogletree slamming the guy down in 2012. Hudson Mason leading us back for 20 to nothing in Atlanta on the 330 kick. Legends are made in these type of games. This is where you come in Georgia lore, man. And uh, it's going to be an exciting day. We get ramped up. You win this when you celebrate being 12-0 and again. And then it's postseason time. And, the, hey, and that is when, Clark, history for getting that third straight national championship becomes real. Because then it's all postseason from there. It's playoff. It's win or go home from there, baby. And it's win or go home now. But it's really going to get cranked up in that postseason. So, hey, let's enjoy beating Tech. Everybody get out to Atlanta. Night game. Get excited because Georgia owns Georgia Tech. Georgia doesn't lose to Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is Georgia's little brother, man. Georgia's going to win this football game 41 to 10. I'm fired up about it. Cannot wait to be. Can't wait to see y'all there. And then it's time to get focused on Alabama after this one. 12 and 0 again. Let's go, dogs, baby. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see y'all Friday night. Go, dogs, baby.